What's the estimated time tonight? Ugh. Do I X out of this or just minus? Which one? Uh, YouTube. I, I see both of you. So <laughs> got recording and you got live on YouTube. Uh, I'm sorry. You're okay. I think I, we're good. You're good on You don't hear an echo, right? From me? No. No, you're good. I don't know. You know, I always try to base it on our phone conference and Well, I'm recording you on my new super duper computer, so we'll see how that goes. Oh. Yeah, my, my brother-in-law built me another one. We realized it was the last one he made me was six and a half years ago. Whoa. So That's but actually a computer. Yeah, but we, we did all we did is we changed the video card in it to more of an updated one. So I gave it to Owen. Now he's got it in his room because he can play his games on it, plus he's taken video with Mr. Gersh at the high school this year. So he needs something to edit on, you know, all year for school. And that's, I mean, it's, it's pretty fast. The old one, but this one the, the hard drive looks like two credit cards put together. It doesn't, it's not even a spinning hard drive. They're all okay. solid state. I've been put one of them in my computer. Oh, did he? Yeah. It's amazing. He it said it's so much faster. Yeah. 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 I'm impressed with anybody who can build a computer. Yeah, it's, it, it, look, it looks impressive. It's got like the colored fans in the front and it changes color. Oh, cool. And so I was forced to buy a keyboard that lights up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas to you. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you spend $2,300 this way. And then if you bought it the way I needed it, it would probably be double that. So you just, you know, buy it as parts. He puts it together and... You know, it's really your business. I mean, it's your business. Yeah. So it's important. But what he what he does is he, he kind of builds it as if I was a gamer. So, you know, because gamers got to move all those games and the high definition. Right. It's play. all high tech. So he builds it to something like that specification. So it's, you know, clearly more than what I need, but it's nice and fast. Hey, John. How are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How you doing? <laughs> How are you, Kevin? All right. Not too bad. Not too bad. Good. Ready? I I guess nobody's in. I may be a little discreet here for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, 
Hey, Etha, the thing you just sent out on the one Forestal School cell tower, is that on tonight's agenda or? Yes. It's it's under miscellaneous. It's oh, not, okay. You don't need, you need not, not worry about that. Okay. Did you uh, get the cookies I left you? I was just going to say I'm getting fat eating cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know if they're good or not. I haven't had any yet. <laughs> I tried a chocolate chip and it was very good. I'll have to break into a box. The oatmeal raisins were on my next favorite. But thank you. Yes. You're welcome. Cold out, huh, John? Ooh. Yeah, it is cool. And tomorrow, are they still calling for flurries or not? Yeah. I don't think we'll get much. You out there in the country, you might get some. <laughs> I'm just hoping for a white Christmas. That's all I want. Yeah, it would be kind of nice, right? For once, it would be nice. It's been a while. I think we haven't had one in a long time. I know. And from what I could see, I don't see it. <laughs> it's going to be like see it happening. average of 40s and rain. Boy, is everybody else off in another meeting? <laughs> <laughs> Always makes me anxious. Yeah. Did you get your tree up? Oh, we had that up a long time ago. <laughs> I just did mine this weekend. It's the earliest ever on my no, no. Because everybody was putting up everything early. Yeah. Originally, she said, no, we can't stick anything up, even outside until after Thanksgiving. You know, we can't do that. I said, but it's warm. People are doing it. Nope, nope, you can't do it. Then she sees everybody else doing it. And on the radio, they're talking about how everybody's putting it up to, you know, keep everybody cheery and happy. She's like, whoa, when are you going to put that up? I'm like, you just told me we couldn't. <laughs> well, we change our mind. Yeah, so everything I put up a couple of weeks ago. Good for you. It's just getting the gift buying done. That's the hard part. Get what? Getting the gifts for everybody. That's the hard yeah. part this year. Yeah. I don't really have to do that much, so... Got a couple things to do. Got a couple things done. So, well, Dominic didn't want that much this year. He couldn't even figure out what he wanted. I'm like, oh, great. Hey, I, I never had that problem as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> How old is Tom? He's uh, ten and a half. That's hard to believe. I huh? know. Time is going by quickly. What's going on with his gymnastics? He's training three days a week. Okay. Um, first competition he was going to got canceled. I think the next one is getting canceled. So we're just waiting to see which one he's going to be able to go to at this point. Get through the winter. Maybe next year will be different. Yeah. Is highway still shut down? Yeah. Oh, Hi, John. Hi, Ethan. Good evening, John. John. How are you? Good yourself. Doing okay. Good. All things considered. <laughs> Good evening, Jennifer. Hi, how are you? Good. Did you ever get my email on 248? 
Yes, I did. I got, yes, I got both of them. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Looks like we're waiting for a few others to join. Yeah, the, our new members are uh, going to be joining us tonight, right? Yes. Yes. He said he got the invite, so I'm just making that assumption. Sounds good. I noticed. I noticed JC's on the uh, on the distribution. I wasn't even aware that he was uh, that he got the nod. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. How are you, Kevin? I'm fine. I'm fine. Good. So let's say we have Kevin um, and myself at the moment, John Russo, John Clark. So we're waiting for a few more board members to join. We're going to go into our training session starting typically starting at seven, but we'll give the other members a few minutes to uh, join us before we dive in. And um, John, you're gonna share with us some new information on view sheds, right? Hey there, sorry I'm late. Hello. How's it going, Kevin? Oh, not too bad. Is John muted on purpose? I think I see his lips moving, but I don't Oops. There yeah, you go. Was... There you are. <laughs> not on purpose. <laughs> All through my um, lack of technical savvy. So yeah, hi, how are you, Len? Um, we have Kevin on, we have Len, I see Randall just now connecting. We have our new uh, newest member as of tonight, starting his two-year term, JC Calderon. Welcome, JC. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thanks for agreeing to be a part of our mm -hmm. board. Yeah. We're glad to have you. Good to see you, JC, welcome. Thanks for having me. Good to see you, absolutely. So it, it appears you know a few of the members. Um, if you haven't met Randall as yet, meet Randall. Hey, pleasure to meet you. Hi, Randall. 
How are you? Good. Good. Randall is one of our longest serving, what is it, like 50 years now, Randall? Yeah, I thought it was 100. <laughs> <laughs> longest serving board members. You were, you were on the board even when I started back in 2003, 2002. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, we have, we're still waiting for a few members, but we have, I think, enough to get started. Um, so, John Clark, you were going to get us uh, going on a conversation about view sheds. Is that right? Part of our yes. workshop? Yes, I can do that. Great. Let's just dive right in. Uh, can F allow me to share a screen? Yes, I think you should be able to. Can you? I'm pulling up. Can you see it? Yes. All right. Um, so for the public, um, the we usually start with a workshop from 7 to 7.30 and the official meeting will start at 7.30, I think. I don't know if that was announced previously. Um, so um, for the workshop tonight, we thought we'd talk about views and view shed protection. Um, the council is considering a, a local law. It says sort of there's an initial draft out there. They've had one workshop discussion in terms of the draft. And we've also gone through a, um, an array of possible views to consider as part of the view shed protection program. There's a, there's a provision in state law that allows the, the uh, local communities to enforce views as long as it doesn't involve a taking. So um, <clears throat> there are something like 13 designated views already in the city. Um, they're instituted, uh, they were instituted during the local waterfront revitalization program back in 1991. Um, and uh, they're still in the books and they're enforced through the LWRP process solely for waterfront uh, related projects in the LWR coastal zone. So uh, I'll go through them first and then we'll open it up to some possible views around the city um, so this is the list that was in the LWRP. Again, it was 1991. Uh, there's some real problems with this. First of all, there's very poor photographs. I've never been able to get a copy of the originals. All we have is copies of copies of copies. So they're very um, hard to see. Uh, some of the text is mixed up in the LWRP. Some of it's identified with old road names that don't exist anymore. So it uh, I've recommended to the council as part of this view shed protection um, initiative that uh, we go back and look at all the LWRP views and um, redesignate them or take them off as the case may be. You'll see some of the problems as we go through them. But, so the first, uh, first one is from Main Street and um, walk out of Route 9D. Uh, towards the river. You can see this is the 91 picture that's shown. So the trees are a little shorter and you get more view of the river. They've grown up since, but you still have a corridor looking down between City Hall and um, the trees on the right to see the river. So that's still a, a good uh, candidate for um, scenic view protection. Uh, the second one I'm showing on the bottom of the screen is from River Street and Beekman Street. Uh, so the police building is on the left. Uh, the picture from 91 seems to be looking down River Street as opposed to towards the river. And I can't explain that because the, uh, the paragraph that describes it does not, it talks about river views, but that's what it looks like to me. So it's hard to tell. This also that um, because of the police building and the uh, growth of uh, trees and the expansion of parking lots in the foreground, um, it isn't as scenic as one might hope. Um, so that's one of the considerations which each year the overgrowth tends to take away some of the scenic qualities of the view. Uh, the next one is actually, oops, I'm sorry, I skipped over one. <clears throat> John, um, I'm just curious, what, what's the thinking, especially by this city, because that's city owned property on 
um, trees that grow up enough to then start to obscure a view shed? What, what is the thinking there? Well, the city has no policy and you'll see from them, a lot of these views have been overgrown over the years and nobody's been, even on public property, maintained them. So that's one of the discussion points and part of the, um, the view shed protection law will be to allow the city to maintain those views. And, or once it's recognized on even a private property that that will be part of the conditions of a site plan, for instance, that those views be maintained so that the owner has to um, keep the trees uh, trimmed and pruned and, and so that the view is maintained. I have a, a quick question. Is there kind of a criterion here about, um, you know, having, does the view shed require kind of a reasonable place to be able to, to stop and observe from? Like, you know, does there need to be like a publicly accessible property or a sidewalk or, or I'm just trying to think of, you know, some of these locations that um, it, it is a, it is a beautiful view shed, but you're generally, you know, going to see it only when driving, you know, and you're going to get a brief look out of your side window, unless you're standing on the sidewalk across the, across Route 9D. And does that in any case have something to do with whether uh, a location is maintainable? Does there have to be some sort of public That'll access? That'll all be addressed in the law, hopefully. All these views will be either from a public street, a sidewalk, or a publicly accessible easement, someplace where the public can get to. Um, and they will be identified on a map from a, both a viewpoint and a description of the view that should be maintained. And will so it, the scope of the view, shed, and the point from which it's visible. Will new ones be proposed or are we sticking that's, with That's a, part of this process, yes. There's okay. a criteria um, section in the draft local law that would allow the, the council to determine new views and yeah, just, to adjust old views. And the reason I was asking is that getting into kind of this zone given the development that sprung up in this location, I was just thinking that, um, you know, a, a view that may be equally warranting preservation, but maybe is a little bit more accessible or, or less kind of um, you know, uh, prone to development changes might be like from the sidewalk as you're walking um, westward towards the, towards the Dia main gate, there's a, there's a raised area, there's that kind of hill that is just to the west of the museum. And you'd be looking out over the river and over Long Dock. Um, I'm just trying to think that there may be, there may be comparable vantage points for some of these views that have been somewhat interrupted by development since 1991, that might be a good swap, you know, depending on people's thinking on that. Um, that, that will be addressed. That's, that's part of the reason I'm going through the, to show some of the views that have been obstructed over the years and what might happen to them. Thank you. Um, so this, this should be a this familiar one, view. Yeah, this one's unique because it's a view that was otherwise obscured, not by development, but by trees. And now the development itself has opened up pretty significant views. Yes, that, that's the, the good point is that um, during the development of the West End Lofts, this view was in the books. And so it was... Um, part of the development changes, uh, the original layout for the West End Lofts had a building right here from where the designated viewpoint. So we changed it around, opened up that view. And, and um, now, even though you can't see the river because of the, the tree growth, you can see the bridge. So that has opened up and presumably maybe even in the, now I haven't been down there since the leaves are off the trees to see it, but uh, maybe you can see the river now as well. So that's an example of how a development can happen on a private property with a view shed that's designated and it still can be maintained through the site plan review process. The same thing you could say for River Ridge. Uh, this is what it looked like a few years ago, uh, overgrown, you couldn't see it except maybe in the winter um, because of the growth of the trees since 1991. And now uh, during construction, if you remember, uh, people who were on the board at the time, they had a parking lot in the or original um, site plan for this. And we arranged, the planning board rearranged the parking so that there would be a green space here with the pavilion set to the side. So you'd get a good shot at the river from Beacon Street or from Rombout in this case. Um, this is from 
what they call Route 90 in Walcott. The southern end of Beekman Street used to be called Walcott. So that was the confusing part, but it is overlooking Dia. You can see the jagged edge of Dia down here. Um, now, again, it's been overgrown, whether we would ask Dia to trim some of these trees or if they're in the public right of way to trim some trees to get the view back, I don't know. Um, but there is a shot at the river from that intersection. Oh, I see. This is the left turn going down to Beekman off of Walcott. Excuse yes. me, right, right turn. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a pretty prominent intersection. Um, to get that river view with some trimming or pruning, you could probably maintain that view and even provide a little shot at Dia so that people would recognize how to get there. Um, this was the most confusing. It was really poorly described. It's called 200 feet west of Bayview Avenue. And um, so 200 feet is about here, west of Bayview Avenue. Um, and yes, indeed, um, here's the picture from 91 and here's the picture from now. You can see the, um, the protrusion of Dennings Point there. The same utility pole is still here and the railroad track. So this is the point from which that view, but it, in the winter, you can get glimpses through the trees, but in the summer, this is totally obscured. Uh, it's a lot of just dense brush along here. So this might be a candidate probably in the public right of way that you could do some pruning and trimming so that you maintain that view from the sidewalk between the station and Dia. Here's the shots to do west and here's towards the bridge. Here you can see the bridge over the tracks. And if you look through, there's the bridge right there. You see my cursor? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so we've identified that view. This one, it's hard to see any scenic view out of this. This is from the intersection of South and Route South Avenue and Route 9D. Since the trees have grown up and the townhouses have gone in and the fence has gone up, um, there's not much that I would call scenic about that view. Uh, so this is one that might, you might consider. There's not much you can do to reclaim this view, but um, well, is it, winter yeah. I would think something different. I'm just curious. Is part of the point here to for at some point in the future, you know, nothing's permanent, the, you know, still continue to preserve these as potential view shed should, say 20 years from now, somebody decides they're gonna redevelop that property. It's unlikely, but I mean, would the goal be to still protect potential view sheds, even if they're currently, for lack of a better term, mucked up? Uh my opinion uh, would be no, you can't protect potential views. They have to be actual views that you can justify as being scenic because you're, you're providing some um, extra hoop that the, any developer would have to go through or any property owner would have to go through. So if there's no view left and it can't be recaptured by say trimming trees or doing something, if it's buildings and long range vegetation that uh, is on and off a of property, then I would say you would look, there's plenty of candidates for better views in this. And I would say this one would be one I would recommend that you take off the list. And the one for the next one down, this is, a, this thing jumps around too quick. Dennings Avenue at South Avenue. Again, new townhouses have gone up. You can get a little bit of a glimpse of the river down here. So whether you keep this one or not, I don't think so, but um, you may adjust. Maybe further down uh, Dennings Avenue, there's a spot where it might be better. I was going to ask that: how spatially constrained are the current, you know, designations? Because when you when you brought up the intersection of 90 and Beekman, it's that location that I was referring to when I was describing a view that I think is worth preserving before. But it's it's the the side the length of the sidewalk along Beekman between 9D and the entrance drive to Dia is is a, is a whole length where you're getting a view of the river and the opposite uh, shore and the mountains without parking lots or buildings. You know, you've just got some light poles, but it's really just treetops and river. Yeah, um, you certainly can redesignate. That's the whole point of this. I'm gonna show you the existing ones that are designated and potential other ones. 
So hold on a bit. Okay. And we'll go through. Uh, this one is uh, a great view. It's not in the local waterfront revitalization program. So I'm not sure how it snuck into the list. And it's not actually located here. The view where, where it's located in the LWRP uh, description is a um, you know, quarter mile north of here where you can't get really very much views at this point because of vegetation. But this is a great spot. Um, so this might be one that you change the designation to move it a little bit south. Um, and the view eight uh, down on South Avenue, I couldn't find any location. The, this driveway in this tree looks somewhat similar to this driveway in this tree and maybe it's just the vegetation. But, um, and again, maybe in the winter you could get a better shot at figuring out where exactly that view was taken at the time. But if you go this time of year, when I took these pictures, there's no way you can see where that view was. There's no shot at the river during summer. And again, this one is potentially a spectacular view from the end of Pay Street, overlooking um, Fishco Creek and the, uh, the river. Um, but at this point, this house has been built since 91, and uh, which obstructed the view. And this property has been overgrown. It's city owned property, so that could be uh, trimmed or adjusted. But right now there's a big boat or last time I looked, there was a big boat sitting right here. And they're really, other than a little peek through the driveway, there's not much review left. So again, I'm not sure how that house got built in the late nineties um, where the view shed was designated. Um, but it's a single family home, home probably avoided the LWRB review process. Here's a view that I think is worthy in the LWRP that I'm not sure why wasn't considered at the time in 91. Maybe there was some obstruction or overgrowth here and it's been trimmed back. But from Bayview Avenue up on top of the hill, you get a terrific panorama all the way from the bridge to Newburgh. Um, so that would be one new one in the LWRP that I would recommend be put in place. And so, then, John, remind me again, the views that we're reviewing here, these are all candidate views or some of them are existing within the LWRP? Until this, one, until this one, these are designated views in Got the it. LWRP. From Bayview Avenue on, our prospective candidates Yep. Okay. that council members suggested, and I went around the city and found views, and so I spent a couple hours driving around and looking for the best spots in the city, and they're Somebody will come up with 10 other ones, I assume, before this process is over, at least. Sounds like Len might. Yes. So starting at the sort of the periphery and we're working towards the river, um, we're out on Route 52. This is uh, Groveville Mills area. Um, so looking straight down Mill Street, there's going to be a new building right here, but it's well below the tree line. So that range would still be visible. An even more spectacular view. I think uh, is a little up the road at State Street. You get a real panorama of the mountains, a uh, really widespread view. And there is a provision of the law. If there are several views in the same area, the council should pick the most prominent and the, the best version of the view, the one most likely to be protected rather than doing multiple views within close proximity. But um, that's just a suggestion. that the council can do whatever they want in terms of designation. Um, here's another view. This is one from Matawan at the end of Tilden Avenue, which is a little elevated over the elementary school. And so you get another big, broad range of mountains. Um, one that was suggested by somebody uh, to the council uh, was uh, at the elementary school on Liberty Street. You get a view of the mountain over the parking lot there just north of the school. Uh, you get also a great panorama looking down Tyron Avenue. Um, also suggested was at each one of the bridges designated a view north and south on the on the creek, so that there would be some preservation of the of the vegetation along this creek if there was any creekside development or whatever that that would be taken into effect because each 
There's, I think, five bridges in the city. So each one of those bridges that view north and south on the creek would be designated. That was one suggestion. I'm hoping that once Rodney's new construction is completed, I can get a better view from his park of the uh, Egyptian motifs on the on the bridge on the Route 90 bridge. There, there's one on each pier facing um, north, huh. but you can just barely see them from that little pocket park because you're not, you know, you're not far enough out. Uh, I've never noticed that. Yeah, that's good. Um, next cool. time I'll check. Going down Tyronda Avenue, there's two or three great spots. Um, one at the very top of the hill near, near 90, uh, one 600 feet south of that before you get to the 248 Tyronda development. Um, there's another shot and then uh, further, much further south before what? you oh. take the bend and go back behind the trees, you get another terrific Weird. view. The city could, uh, could we ask, I think it's Barry Cohen, could we ask you to mute please? Oh. There's also views from various streets in the city because a lot of the streets go east-west towards the mountains. So um, where you get a little elevated rise, you tend to get the best views. So here's one at DeWitt at North Elm Street. There's the count back of the county lot on the left. You get a pretty good shot at the river and also um, east of Cliff Street, a little further up. You get even a broader view. Now, whenever you get on the city streets, except for Main Street, you get wires are part of the view. So that's uh, one thing to take into effect, which ones have the best views without maybe the interruption of telephone poles and wires. Wouldn't these views otherwise be protected just based on their zoning restrictions, height? Oh, sure. Yeah, that's that's the thing when we when we looked at street views from public places, a lot of these places would not affect private property development because presumably that house can go up to 35 feet, but it can't go up high enough to block that ridge line. Yeah. So what would, what would be the point then in designating these as, as important view sheds? Well, um, in theory, you could do something maybe with the wires. If you were doing undergrounding wires, you could do that in those areas. Uh, you could take them into effect when you, uh, views into effect when you put in street trees. Yeah, okay, thank you. And I guess you could, you would have a reason to prune if you wanted to, whereas otherwise there would be no impetus to do vegetation management, right? If you had a... Yeah, a lot of, and you'll see a couple slides from now, uh, the trees are the biggest inhibiting factors to views in the city. Um, here you get from the, um, West end of Main Street, you get good uh, views framed by the street and the street trees. But once those trees get bigger, they tend to block the views. So for instance, a couple blocks up at Elm Street, you lose the view of the mountain because of the height of the trees. You, you could easily say they frame the views, John. As a well, it depends on where you are. Um, but in, in many yeah. cases where there are mature trees, that's a true you really block. do block the views. Yeah. You get a maybe a quarter right down the middle if you're driving the center line, but from the sidewalks, you lose the view. Although as you're as you're traversing Main Street, the view is framed by different things. I you know, I agree with I wouldn't want to punish a mature tree, you know, for a you know, for a view of <laughs> But here you can see there's one big tree on this side, but a little tree is on that side, and that's where you get the view. Once those trees grow up, you'll still get this chunk of the view, but you won't get the full panorama view. And so it's classic. You can't see the forest from the trees. That's the problem here. There are juxtapositions, though, that are really cool. When you get down to the, um, the east end of Main Street and the old hotel um, that has the two towers on the two turrets on it, you get those juxtaposed against the mountain and you get the uh, the really tall church steeple oh, yeah. uh, on the opposite side of the of the street juxtaposed against the mountain that's a it's a great view I, that's I a think classic. That, i got that one two slides up so we've got about There's two another minutes spot a theater in which you start getting mature trees that um interrupt the views and, and main street is a mile and a half long essentially so some places you get views and then you break through and you get another view. It's kind of nice. And I'm with whoever said it, I wouldn't cut down trees to get views, although I'm proposing it in one spot. So um, that's an argument. Here again, you can see the tall trees versus the short trees. 
as those grow up. Um, here's the, the dilemma. Um, this is the classic post art card view of, of the end of Beacon Street. As you come to that curve, you get this great panoramic view with the church steeple on the right, this historic church, the storefront curving on the left, and the view of the mountain behind it. But if this is the current view from the same spot, because whoever planted those trees planted them in the, in the middle of the view. So you have a clump of trees, very dense trees, um, that to me block that iconic view. And so I've recommended to the Main Street Access Committee that we cut those trees, put low plantings here, so that you see both the church from that way and you see the view from this way, and you plant replacement trees here and over here, so you frame the view. Yeah, so, see that, that's a conundrum. I, you know, that that tree itself at the sort of street level experience provides, you know, its own kind of unique qualities. So it's it's back to that question of do you, you know, sacrifice a mature tree? Do you really want to sacrifice a mature tree? And that how that you know affects the experience at the street level simply for a view. And if you go if you go west a block or two the mountain is going to be very prominent. It opens up. Yeah. Uh, it, well, I, here's, I don't have that slide, but there is a, a, but not nearly as impressive a view as this is. But that's a good argument to have as to whether those trees can be replaced uh, in kind somewhere that frames the view or whether you want to keep them. But I've shown historic slides coming this way that this completely blocks the view of the church coming up from East Main Street and it blocks the view of the mountain coming. It's just in the wrong spot. My feeling is you put a tree here, you got trees here, you put a tree on the edge of the church over here um, and you, you have a, the same number of trees, but with a view in both directions of both the church and the mountain. Well, but, let's, let's see if the city will float a bond to move that tree. Can I, can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I was on the Main Street Access Committee and I looked at that area and for my opinion, the, uh, the space between Main Street and the brewery has very low, you know, low height trees and shrubs. And if you just um, took away those trees that the, the view shed would be enormous because, uh, because with the buildings there at one East Main, there's, there's, you see a tremendous amount of the mountain. So that was that was my recommendation. Well, we we only have a minute, but we have lost it. So let me just finish this up, and we'll move on. We maybe can discuss at the end of the meeting again. The other views that that are spectacular, but do they need protection? Because most of this is already protected land. But the view from the train tracks, uh, the bridge over the train tracks, the view from Long Dock the view from Long Dock looking south and Dennings Point looking south. So there's spectacular views all over the riverfront and how you allocate those, I'm not so sure. So those, that's an overview of the scenic view discussion. We're gonna be discussing again at the uh, workshop next Monday. Uh, we'll be discussing the law and um, the draft law and, and I have some examples of how it might work in effect, sort of theoretical examples of how to block, uh, whether views could be blocked during development and how to manage that. So uh, if you want to tune into the council meeting, you can get more information. That's great. So so next steps, John, it, it, so it goes, it, you're going to work through this in council to refine the views, the list, and the law language itself, and then it'll yeah. make its way, eventually, will it make its way back to us? Yes. Yeah. Once, it, once it becomes a official draft law to be considered, they always refer to the planning board for your comments. Okay. Well, great. Thanks. That was a nice, um, that was a nice overview. Nice tour through Beacon as well. Um, so we'll get started. Welcome everybody to the December meeting of the City of Beacon Planning Board. Um, before we get started, I've got a quick uh, quick item to read uh, relative to the meeting. Um, so I'll do that and then we'll, we'll get on with our business. Tonight's meeting has been convened in accordance with the governor's executive orders, which suspend certain provisions of the open meetings law to allow a municipal board to convene a meeting via video conferencing. In accordance with the executive orders, the public has been provided with the ability to view and hear tonight's meeting and a transcript will be provided at a later date. 
The meeting is being broadcast on the city's YouTube channel. The link is available on the city's website. As always, the agenda and all materials considered for tonight's meeting are available for viewing on the city's website. We have three public hearings scheduled on tonight's agenda. Anyone that wants to comment during a public hearing will have the ability to do so by calling the following phone number, 929-205-6099. That's 929-205-6099. The webinar ID is 850-2537-5650. And the password is 525352. By pressing star nine on your phone, you can indicate to the host of this video conference that you wish to be heard. Then we uh, please wait to be called upon. Before we get started, please make sure your audio is muted to eliminate background noise and audio feedback. Um, and I will try to remember before each public hearing to read those numbers um, so that they're fresh. Um, so um, we'll address last month's meeting notes. Uh, does anyone on the board uh, have any um, uh, suggestion to form modification uh, or can we accept the motion to approve? Motion. Motion to approve by Kevin, second. Second. Seconded. Joe got to it first, second by Jill. All in favor, aye. 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 Great, uh, so we will move right to our agenda. Um, the first item on our agenda has been postponed and forgive me while I take a second to call it up on my other computer. Uh, so anyone here to hear secret public hearing um, on Conklin Street, that uh, application has been postponed at the request of the applicant. So we will then move to item number two on the agenda. This is public hearing on applications for special use permit and site plan approval for an accessory apartment at one, excuse me, 179 Union Street submitted by John Kettridge and Amanda Gassoni. Um, I'll accept a motion to open the public hearing for um, special use permit and site plan. Motion. Motion by Randall. Second. Okay. Second by Jill. I think you got to it first again. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. So, um, John, Amanda, are you with us? We are here. Okay, excellent. Welcome. Um, so, since last meeting, you had some um, comments that you were responding to by our um, city consultants. Uh, did you want to give us a quick update on what you might have addressed um, since our last meeting and relative well, to the city's comments? Please. I think the uh, main area of concern was the um, addition of the driveway um, on the side of the house. Um, we have added some provisions for a uh, fence um, along the neighboring property. Um, I think there was a request for some uh, further details on that fence. Um, we have, um, there are three trees at the, uh, near the end of the driveway. Um, we have proposed to remove one of those trees to uh, at the smaller of the trees to open up the sight lines. Um, and there's also a note now that the, uh, the driveway would be a, a gravel driveway. Um, as to not create uh, additional runoff onto the neighboring property. Okay, great. Um, and before we go to the public for comment, um, just want to touch on John and John's comments, just to make sure we're clear on anything that might need to still be addressed. So John Russo. Thank you, John. Um, one of the comments I have right offhand is that the drawing is still not to scale. Um, John, I know you had an engineer prepare this or at least sign and seal this. And although there's a line on there that says 20 feet, the drawing still does not scale properly. There's no actual scale to this. Is one inch equals 20, one inch equals 30. You just can't scale it. So the drawing has to be provided at true scale. 
Um, that thing is site distances have to be provided in both directions for the proposed driveway. And we had previously asked for um, topography in the area of the proposed driveway. We wanted to see what the existing topography is there and how it's gonna be graded. Uh, if there's any modifications at all. Yeah, so I, I had spoken with my uh, engineer regarding topography. Um, he felt that since it, it would not be, the existing grade was to remain, um, that the, um, the topography need not be shown, but I, I can ask that it be shown. Okay, thank you. Is that all you have, John? I'm done, that's it. Okay, and uh, there's, there's three John, four Johns talking at the same time here. So John Ketrich, uh, you'd mentioned that um, you'd made indication of a fence at, uh, I think it was the west side of the property. Um, John Clark, you had a note in your comments relative to um, some further information you'd wanna see. Yeah, we, we like to see a detail of the fence, just how high it is, what it's made out of, um, what it looks like so we can make sure that whatever is approved is built the same way. So just provide a detail of what type of fence, you, fence you're gonna put up and how high it's gonna be. Um, and I think the reason the grading might be important is that we worry about drainage on the neighbor's property. And so if there's a drainage issue in which your land tends to push water over to the neighbor's property, uh, we wanna be able to know that and fix it so that it, uh, you know, it's not aggravated by the fact that there's gonna be a driveway here. So just in that area, I think it's probably a good idea to have the contours just to make sure the drainage is staying on your land. That's and all will, me. They've addressed all my other comments. Yeah, great. Thanks, John. I will mention, um, it was just from personal um, point of view, uh, chain link, if you're at all considering that is highly discouraged. <laughs> I, can, I can guarantee you it will not be a chain link. Okay, great. So at this point, we can go to the public um, for any comment. Etha, is there anyone uh, on the call who has their hand raised or otherwise indicating they would like to be heard? You're on mute, Ethan. Sorry, I don't see anyone with their hand raised, but we did get an email at like 6.30. Ah. Sent to you. Yeah, let me. Do you have that or? I do. Um, from Alan Flynn, 160 Union Street. Um, let me see if I can quickly summarize. Otherwise it will um, in its entirety um, become part of the record. Um, let's see, in general, I'm not a fan of this new law that allows accessory units on any property in any zone. It is ripe for abuse, especially by not long-term owners or developers. Imagine what your street looks like. Okay, uh, so this is uh, generally um, disagreement with the law itself. It's a very weak law. Um, bringing it back to the specific application. I'm sorry that I have to speak negatively against someone who I have yet to meet because of COVID. And I appreciate the exterior improvements on the formal rental that has been a 20 year eyesore. There are already um, multiple illegal two families, some relatively new construction within throwing distance. That's another matter. Um, so in general, again, I'm not gonna read the entire letter. It will go into the record. Um, uh, this individual, Alan Flynn, is writing in, um, not in support. Um, if I can say that the accessory apartment law has been on the books in Beacon since 1989, so it's not a recent law. Um, it, the only changes that were made recently was it uh, were in relation to the parking count required for an accessory apartment and the fact that the planning board can approve it rather than going to the city council. Yeah. Yeah, great. Thanks, John. Um, anyone else, um, Etha, from your vantage point, looking to yeah. comment on this? Um, so um, we'll just quickly go around the board. Um, just get thoughts, comments, questions. Kevin, do you want to start? Um, yeah, basically, my my thoughts before were that uh, in if there aren't too many of them. Uh, having small apartments 
uh, uh, as an accessory uh, to existing uh, owner occupied um, uh, residences, uh, provides uh, an additional amount of low, um, uh, inexpensive apartments essentially because the size, they can't be that large. And so, uh, whereas most of the new apartment buildings that are getting built are, uh, uh, the vast majority of them are, uh, you know, it's, it's new construction, they have to charge more money. So there's a benefit uh, for affordability um, in, in uh, <clears throat> what would be a problem is if, uh, I think that if these were, uh, if there wasn't the new Airbnb law and that these conversions were being made and people were uh, uh, then uh, um, using them as Airbnbs. But I think that the that Airbnb law uh, kind of limits the, uh, the ability to do that to a certain extent. Great, thanks Kevin. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk tonight about um, <clears throat> having Jennifer um, uh, generate draft resolution for approval. Um, yeah, any thoughts on that? I don't have any objection to it. Okay. I, I appreciate the comments that the planner and uh, the, that our consultants have had, and I agree with them. Okay, great. Um, Len, we'll jump to you. Um, just a quick question, and I'm sorry if you already covered this, John, but the existing chain link fence, is that on the applicant's property or the neighbor's property? It's on the neighbor's property. Okay, there, yeah, there's, I just was, you know, when we were talking about the details for the fencing and I was just going back, looking at Street View, there is an existing uh, chain link with some plantings uh, along it on the other on the other property. So I don't know, is that um, anything that's been uh, discussed? I don't know. If, I don't know if we have any um, concerns about fences immediately adjacent to each other or whether that's not an issue or. So what you're saying, Kevin, excuse me, Len, is that um, fences back to back. Correct. Yeah. So, I mean, unless maintained, sometimes all of those um, horrible weeds tend to grow into trees. Um, but other than that, I can't think of anything. John Clark, is that, that there's nothing necessarily of concern around that. Um, you know, other than maintenance. Yeah, the, the only thing is maintenance. So if you're going to do a painted fence, you'd want to put it uh, far enough from the chain link fence that you can get on both sides. If you're going to do a natural fence, um, then I think you can put it pretty close to the to the two. Uh, and I don't know. That's that's not a very big corridor. To I, what? I mean, is I'm just have we looked at the setback for the for the, the parking fence? is five feet from the um, property line. Okay. So there's room to put a fence in there without affecting the property. Right, and still or have enough room to. The um, the driveway. Like you said, if you want to get between it to paint it, that may get things may get a little bit sticky. But that's um, I guess that's up to the applicant to figure out. But that's that's my only comment. Well, that's why we want the detail on the fence. If it's going to be painted, then we would suggest that it be moved two feet from the property line. If it's going to be natural, it could be closer, and then it, it becomes a less of a maintenance issue between the two. And that's an important item to note, John and Amanda. Sure. I think um, and we want to sort of consult with our neighbor first um, and come up with it? a fence that will. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe if you talk to them, they might um, be amenable to, uh, to taking down the chain link because just generally increasing John Gunn's overall happiness is <laughs> on the minds of. <laughs> and that's what's really important at the end of the day, right? <laughs> if they're going to get a privacy fence, but you know, in any case, I get that's for you guys to, sort out i get incrementally happier with every foot of demolished chain link fence um <laughs> so we'll go to is that it lynn yeah we'll go to jill any thoughts jill well yeah just to continue on the on the fence thought just just the idea of have of building two fences back to back just uh, galls me you know it's like so unnecessary um so if if we could get rid of the chain link fence, that would be great. And just build a nice fence, privacy fence. Um, but I realize there's cost involved in getting rid of the chain link fence as well. So um, otherwise I agree with um, what, what Kevin said that the part of the master plan is uh, to encourage affordable housing and accessory apartments are 
definitely uh, one way of doing that um, without the, the expense of brand new construction. So I think they're to be encouraged when done properly. So. Great, thanks, Jill. Uh, Randall. Yeah, you know, you know my uh, feeling on redundancy. So with respect to the comments about the back-to-back -back fences and the comments, I agree with what Kevin is replying. So I'm good. I'll start with you first next time then. <laughs> um, JC, any thoughts? Yeah, just one one question on the on the five foot setback because I read the November minutes and John Clark had noted that he wanted the five foot setback help uh, upheld and so the question is how is the fence upholding that what what is what is going to be done to uphold the five foot like fence is the five feet going to be gravel as well. Um, uh, we, we can look at that, but I, I, we can certainly delineate it with a, a mulch or something that is, is not gravel that's, that separates the, the driveway from the five foot setback. Yeah, the driveway should be um, set five feet from the property line by code. Yep. So it's shown on the plan that way. And when the CO is given, the, the building inspector should go out there and make sure that there's five foot distance between the edge of the driveway and the and the neighbor's property line. And the fence is mainly just for privacy. So you have a new um, car going in and out on that side of the street, it's relatively close to the neighbor's property. So uh, we wanted to put up uh, not just a chain link fence, but something that was more of a visual barrier so that people had um, some sense of privacy between the new apartment and the existing house. When we asked the applicant for the topo survey um, on that, that was the general area that we were referring to, right? Where the driveway is proposed, the new gravel driveway? Yes, it was just in the area of the driveway. It wasn't across yeah. the entire site. And the concern we, was about runoff, right? Adjacent well, property. I, right, and I was, I was just gonna say that, um, do we have any thoughts on um, what we might require? Because it is a pretty, um, there, is, there is a kind of significant downslope grade you know, as you get as you get closer to the neighboring property, um, the the grade slopes both the house towards where the entrance is going to be the accessory apartment, and also slopes down further down Union Street. So, I guess I'm just saying, in, in an effort to try to kind of prevent too much back and forth, do we have any sense of what um, what reaction might be when you get that topo back and you see, you know, the the slope both kind of uh if you you know like you even just looking at the front of the house the way the foundation is exposed it's a pretty steep hill um on that side of the house and then it's also the driveway the closer you get to the um the accessory entrance the you know the, the lower you're getting so it's it's sloping you know in both directions Right. Well, first thing, Len, was to see what grading had to occur in the area to actually allow this driveway um, to be built in that area, to see if there was going to be any major grading, how it was going to blend with the existing contours in the area. Um, two, they proposed to put in a gravel driveway. So that should minimize any runoff from the site. I mean, my concern was, what were they going to put in if they were putting in a paved driveway? You know, you have all that water and you're correct. The grading goes from Union Street back towards their house and does slope also towards their neighbor in that area. So I didn't want to have a problem with the neighbor where all this water from their driveway now ran onto the neighboring site. Yeah, thank you. I just figured if there was anything else, I just, you know, that we could preview for them, it would, you know, put them one step ahead of, of, you know, coming back with the grading and then getting another set of directions based on that. But I think it's, it sounds like primarily the fact that the driveway is going to be a, a porous is going to, we expect that's going to be alleviate most of the concern. Yes. Well, okay. how, how much actual grading, John Ketris, do you think you're going to be doing in order to create this driveway? Uh, I, we weren't intending on changing the grade at all with the exception of, of, of leveling um, you know, just the driveway section to the, you know, some, some rough grading. Um, the grade um, is substantially 
um, where it will be uh, at the end yeah. of the day. Okay, so so in that sense, the um, the intent is, and potentially the um, end effect is, no additional significant runoff, based on the fact that there's no you know significant grading planned, and that you're adding a, a type of surface that um, inhibits to some degree um, gathered runoff in volume. So. Um, that's a good concern, Lynn. Um, I think, it, and again, given um, your uh, willingness to speak with your engineer about making sure that your next submission is showing um, the information around grading and the other additional information that um, both John and John uh, mentioned in their letters, that those will be conditions of a um, our directing um our city attorney to draft resolution for approval for next month. Um, so unless there's anything else, um, Jennifer, do you have what you need in order to do so other than us to um, act on that? Yep. I yeah. That. Okay. So, and then, and in that case as well, we'll just, we'll just keep the public hearing open for next month and authorize and I'll accept a motion to authorize um, our city attorney to draft resolution for approval. Um, <clears throat> stating the um, the items that we discussed and that are um, a part of our city engineer and um, planners notes as conditions. Um, who wants to make that motion? Motion. Motion. Motion by second. Len. I'll take a second by Randall. All in favor? Aye. 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 We got everybody, Joe? Aye. Joe, hi. you're on mute. I can't hear your hi, eye. Hi, I got I'm going to have to do it one by one again if, <laughs> if we can't get in sync. Uh, I think that's all in favor. You good, Atham? Yep. Okay. Well, John and Amanda, thank you. We'll see you next month. Thank you. Okay. We're going to move on to item three on the agenda. And this is... <clears throat> excuse me, public hearing on application for site plan approval, a gallery gar slash garage edition at 469 Main Street, uh, submitted by David Rich and Paulette Myers Rich. Um, so do we have the applicant with us? Yeah. Oh, hi, Paulette. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. So um, I'm sure you're up to speed on um, our conversation of last month. Um, um, were you with us last month, Paulette? Yes, I was. Oh, yeah. you were. Okay, forgive me. Um, so since that um, point in time in our last conversation, did you have anything you wanted to add relative to uh, anything new on the application? John, can I just interject for one second? We just need a motion to open the public hearing. Oh, excuse me. Thank you, Jennifer, for keeping me motion. in line. Motion by Randall. Second? Second. Second by Jill. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry, Paulette. Um, I tend to forget. Thank, thank you. Um, yes, uh, there are a few um, minor changes, although um, they're important ones. Um, we met with our general contractor who renovated this building and who'll be doing the addition. So he's very familiar with the structure, uh, went through all the structural engineering and all the other um, things from the first round. And um, we looked at on the plan, there is a... Um, uh, a trench drain and a, um, a center um, drain in the interior of the addition. And we are not going to, you know, with the drywall, the drain going to a drywall holding tank, we're not going to install those for uh, several reasons. Um, the primary reason is we have, um, I originally had thought about putting a center drain in there because I do paper making and I thought it would be nice to have it for paper making workshops in that space. It's not necessary. Um, what we discussed was that the drywall and holding tank um, could compromise the foundations of either buildings, which we don't want to do. And so we're not going to put that in. Uh, what we will do instead is slope for water runoff, slope the, um, the area in front of the bifold doors slightly and then have um, French drain or tiles installed 
around the perimeter of the building and to the rear there will be green space where we'll direct the water from both the roof and the um, uh, hardscape around the building to that back area where um, it'll be you know green space and there's a big maple tree back there that also will help you know pull up some of the groundwater um, from runoff so we're going to remove that um, drain drywall holding tank that's shown on the plan and then the other thing that um, we're talking about as just a design change is on the plan as drawn on the elevation the doors show uh, two over two windows um, and the door style will remain the same but rather than two over two it'll just be two vertical panes with a center mountain. So it'll, they will be um, actually match the existing doors on the side that will adjoin the addition. So we want to have continuity with the doors um, that are existing. And so it'll look contiguous. It'll, it'll there will not be any um, difference between the types of doors that'll be um, on, on the facade. Great, thanks, Paulette. I'm curious the um, the two items you mentioned um, as far as I think it was drainage, right? Right. Uh, were those are those new since your since the um, engineer reviewed? John, is this yeah. is this new? No, okay. Yeah, that was on the original. Okay, so I'm not I'm not necessarily seeing anything in your comments, John Russo, relative to that. Is is that? No, I didn't even notice them, John, before until okay. I pointed them out. But they are getting rid of them, and I would say for good reason, because there is a concern uh, with impacts on the structural stability of foundations of their building, neighboring buildings, um, and soil testing would have to be conducted just to see if there was uh, the soils there could infiltrate. Okay, good. Well, sounds like an advantageous um, modification then, right? Yes. Um, and then, Paulette, you mentioned um, some aesthetic updates you're making. Is I don't see anything as part of your submission package that reflects that. Was that uh, since since last review? <clears throat> Excuse yeah. me. Yeah, Sorry. On elevation. Everything will remain substantially the same. With the just the pattern of the window will be vertical instead of two over two. Yeah, I'm curious too because so it, that would be um, good to see. But as well, last month we discussed. Uh, I think it was your. I don't know who it was. It was presenting for you. Was it, it was your architect? architect? Architect John. Yeah, we had we had shared some thoughts on um, some of the aesthetic relative to um, the trim around the um, entry door and the um, garage door and the Claire stories. Right. So that's something we would expect to see updated. Okay. Um, yeah, these doors are, um, they have um, some nice um, raised panels and <clears throat> details. And uh, so the doors themselves are, are trimmed out in such a way that it would give some nice detailing to the facade but um, we can have those details submitted, um, updated and submitted. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so just real quick, anything in addition, uh, John Russo looks like um, just as far as your observations, um, um, you note the easement, which we wanted to touch on, right? Right, note the easement and for our discussion earlier, um, the draft easement has already been sent back. The city attorney sent that information back to them. And the other thing was the scale on sheet one. Things do not scale properly. Dimensions seem to be off. So that needs to be checked by the architect on that drawing. Basically, that's all I have. Just some minor other uh, comments with regards to cleanup. Yeah, great. And John Clark, same minimal. And there, you know, there have been changes to the drawing since we last saw it in regard to that trim between the the doors and the clear story window, and and also the addition of the light fixtures. Um, ah, Kevin, just wanted to sorry, Lynn, in. you're absolutely right. I have to for, you have to forgive me. 
again, technology. I was just looking at the single page that was the um, first page of the um, plan submissions. Um, and you're right. So forgive me, Paulette. Um, yeah, they used to the the clear story used to have a kind yep. of a separation from the that's the trim's been changed there and the we we mentioned the light fixtures, but yeah, I just wanted to point that out. So Thank there have you. been have been some yeah. updates. I'm Welcome. sorry, I'm a, I'm a hard copy kind of guy, so it's, I'm it's taking me very long to get used to this electronic stuff. Um, so Paulette, what you mentioned about the um, mullion spacing is that is that what you're is that reflected here in the updated drawings? I, that that's not. Yeah, no, I didn't think it was. It's a it's a aesthetic decision that we have been um, looking at um, because what we want to do is use the same style door uh, that exists on the building for continuity. I see. Okay. So the so the first set of drawings had no mullions. The updated drawings have two over two, but you're saying they're really going to be just a, a vertical kind of a side by side. Correct. Is it, yeah. Okay. So two side by side with the vertical. Um, how about on the entry door? Same. They'll all be the same. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually. I'm. I have no objection to that. I think it's actually preferable. Good. I can say um, there is a provision in the code because I was satisfied with what was shown. But if you're going to change it, just make sure that you address. The design standards in the historic district overlay zone has a provision that the primary individual window proportion shall be greater in height than width, um, with exceptions for transom windows, storefronts, and other specialty windows. So, if you're going to do um, a vertical with two side by side glasses, as long as the glass is vertical in proportion and not horizontal in proportion. Yeah, it looks like that's what would end up happening here. Yeah, I think they I would, understand they it right. Be... Yes, but I just want to make sure that I understand it right. Yeah. Yes, that's okay. That's, uh, yeah. So okay. th then, my only other comment was that the um, the board should be aware that there's a ten percent minimum landscape requirement, uh, but it can be waived for lots under five thousand square feet, which this lot qualifies for. So I would just see, make sure that the board is okay with waiving yeah. that landscaping requirement. There is some landscaping in the rear. I'm not sure it's 10%, but this is a small enough lot that the, the board has the ability to waive it under the CMS uh, code. So as long as you're willing to waive that, then we don't have to worry about that in, in the final write-up of the resolution. Sure. Um, let's, go, uh, let's go to the public first. We'll talk about the waiver, and then we'll talk about um, draft resolution. So, uh, Etha, do we have anybody raised I hand? Have, I have. One person, and it's ending in two five eight. Hi, Essa. Can you hear me? Yes. It's Teresa Kraft. I thought so. Thank you. Wait, who? I'm in. <laughs> hey, John. Hi, Teresa. I'm in. I'm in full support of this project and appeal to the planning board to approve the Riches Photo Books Work Site Plan application. This addition of a new multi-space gallery space and garage alongside their existing superiorly renovated historic building is an outstanding example of new development on Main Street. This small outbuilding will also act as a sound buffer to the real municipal parking lot behind the existing driveway, ideally creating a public benefit to pedestrians at the street level. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, as I promised, I'll read the phone numbers and ID and password again, just in case for anyone who wanted to call in 929-205-6099. The webinar ID is 850-2537-5650. And the password is 525-352. Again, the number <clears throat> to call 929-205-6099. And I don't know why I always feel like I'm doing a fundraiser when I read those numbers. Um, anyone else? Have to... No, there's nobody else. Okay. Uh, so we'll leave it open while we're talking through um, what um, John Clark mentioned relative to the landscape waiver. Um, personally, um, in support, generally don't think... Um, 
um, that poses any particular issues uh, in providing this waiver. I just want to get thoughts around the board. Uh, let's start with Randall. Yeah, I'm fine with it. I'm in support of it and of the project. It's not a problem. Great. I'll go in reverse order. JC, thoughts? You're on mute. All right. No, I have no um, uh, objection to that. Okay. Um, Jill. Um, I think it looks good. Uh, I'm wondering if th is the um, does the garden in back anyway equal ten percent? Is the garden just a, that one raised bed? It's hard to tell. Um, the the back area actually where the garden's going to be is currently all asphalt. So we will be opening up a significant area that's going to become green space. So if that's of any help to your decision, um, that area will, you know, it, it will not be hardscape anymore after this project's done. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it matters anyway. I'm just, whatever green space you do add is like gravy, so. Agreed. Great. Thank you, Jill. Kevin. I have no, I have no problem with any of that. Okay. Uh, and Len? Uh, I don't have a concern with the uh, the landscaping waiver. Uh, I was going to point out one thing, and it, it just you know I know we need to focus on the drawings, not the renderings. But I noticed that on the drawings, there is a signage band above the clear story windows. It doesn't show up on the rendering, and I just wanted to make sure that we um, had an opportunity to discuss that in case ah. anyone had any questions about it. Or good point. It's about the same. It's the same length as the as a door and window unit, and it just. Um, so uh, would be located, I guess, above on the on the Hardy border, if that's what the Hardy plank signing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah go ahead, Paul. Um, you had no, something. I was going to say, if we do any signage, it would be uh, consistent with what's in the windows, which was approved um, in 2016, uh, along with the um, site plan review at that time. So it would be. Uh, it would be the same. We just don't have it shown on here because we're not sure if we're going to use it or not. And if we do, we're actually thinking of something pretty um, minimal. Uh, we, we may not put any signage up there at all. But if we do, we're willing to go through um, sign review um, if required for that. Um, yeah, you would need to. So, um, okay. We are required to do sign review if in the HDLO. So um if you want to include it in this one you would save yourself a trip back um if you in, if you intend to do a sign up there but you would have to come to the planning board to have that reviewed yeah so it's it's shown in the north elevation um yeah so what i would recommend is either um for um for this application if you don't intend to uh, for a while um put anything up there i would just take the signage band off of that elevation okay. um and then as you know from from what john just mentioned if you if and when you do decide to put signage up you know you're, you'll be coming back for that specifically um unless you want to roll a new sign into this application then <clears throat> we'd want to review that so that's up to you is it possible to have the signage band as a form of trim? We were thinking of maybe using some contrasting trim, like maybe red or something to, um, you know, call out some of the uh, uh, design on there. But um, if we do do a sign, it will be of the very same style that's already uh, in the front windows. It would just be different lettering, whether it's the name of the space, if we give it one or it may be something as simple as, you know, um, you know, a number, you know, an address or number or something. I'm not, I I'm, see. we haven't decided yet. We're still trying to figure that out, but it would, it would appear, it would be the same size lettering, coloration, et cetera, and design as what's already in, in existence. There's also right. a set size for the amount of signs you're allowed per building based on the frontage of the lot. So, you would just have to check, just check the calculations to see if you have excess sign available. Okay. Great. Thank you. So question. I, does John, this... John, sorry. I have, a, I have a quick question about this signage. If, 
if they were to, or if we were to approve this, the design with the signage band in it, and then they decided not to do it, would they have to come back to to the well, planning? Well, yes. Board? So that and that's what that was sort of part of my question. Um, the signage. So, are you looking to include the signage band itself without any signage on it as a part of this renovation? It's, um, it's something that we're considering. Um, you know, we've, we've gone back and forth about it. If it's preferable that we do um, a sign review later um, after the fact, I mean, we'd be willing to do that too. Um, you know, it's not like, I mean, because we are still not even sure what the signage would be or how we would name the space, um, which we still haven't, determined i think that it's not like something that's really pressing for us right now um, we're more interested in getting the project underway and we're willing to come back with signage um, if that's if that's appropriate yeah so i guess what i'm getting at is that is is if you're going to install the signage band without any lettering mm -hmm. without any sign on it as a part of this construction, then we'd want to see what that signage band looks like, colors and all that. Okay. In the rendering, um, if your if the signage itself, the lettering and logo and name carries with the band the physical thing itself, and you feel like waiting until later to do all of that, then the other option is to take that signage band off of the elevation drawing i guess you like follow? The, the color palette is on there john i think it, I, I imagine it, it looks like the signage band would be that warm red that claret i guess with gray trim against the dark gray yeah um, no i understand clabberts. i understand so 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 it sounds to me like that's what you're going to do you'd like to build that signage band and leave it blank for the time being if that's got it okay okay yeah I, I understand now. Okay. Um, yeah. So then I would include it on the um, rendering. It would be helpful to we see can, it in the rendering. We we can put it on the rendering. That's not a yep. problem. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks. I'm I'm sorry to have belabored that. Um, uh, okay. So any anyone um, currently from the public, Etha, who um, has decided they want to. I have one share their question. thoughts. Okay, great. Uh, it looks like Mary. Hi, this is um, Mary Miller. I uh, I live at twenty four Van Nuyck Avenue, which is basically behind um, the proposed. Site. Um, and I, and I'm, I'm happy to hear that the hardscaping will be replaced by some green space. That's, that's a nice change. Um, I am curious as to um, parking ne needed or impacts um, based on this potentially being a gallery and workshop space. Um, is that anything that's been considered or discussed at this point? Because this is my first meeting. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the parking is satisfied by a provision in the law that um, that says it sort of grandfathers older buildings. So if this building was in place in 1964 and had a lesser, um, had, has a, um, the expansion doesn't increase the um, parking by 25% of what it was in 1964, it's exempt from any new parking. So there's a provision in the law that exempts this building because it's old enough for any new parking in conjunction with the new addition. Right. So Thanks the parking congestion we exhibit, we deal with now will continue and perhaps get worse. Good to know. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Mm -hmm. um, is, that, can I, is it okay if I speak to that? 
question? Yes, yes, you may. But however, just make sure we understand that the um, the caller also understands that this isn't a Q and A. It's not a back and forth. It's a simple forum for. You're welcome to respond, Paulette. But it's yeah. a simple forum for comments. Okay. Thank you. Um, I just want to state, state that um, we do have our own personal parking spot on the site. There's only two people that live and work here, and that. This is not going to increase the traffic. It's going to be substantially the same as it's been. And um, we don't do large events and we rely mostly on walk-in traffic. So it's going to put less pressure on the Van Nydick lot than say the new patio that the brothers just installed and in increasing their you know, number of tables in their establishment. I mean, it's, it's really not going to put additional pressure on the neighborhood, so in our use. Great, thank you. Um, so um, I just have a quick question, Jennifer. As far as a waiver, can we roll that into our conditions for approval? Yes, that would yeah. be the appropriate place to memorialize it. Yeah, I was thinking we, we wouldn't, and just wanted to clarify, we wouldn't need a separate um, action on that, right? right. Okay, um, so at this point, Atha, anyone else looking no. to make public comment? I'll accept a motion to close the public hearing. Motion. Motion by Len. Second. Second by Jill. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, great. And so then um, I will um, accept a motion to authorize our attorney to draft resolution for approval um, with um, the um, acknowledgement of the waiver for um, landscape, as well as um, any relevant um, comments in this month's um, notes from our city planner and engineer. Motion. Motion by Jill. Second. Second by Kevin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Hi. Okay, great. So, um, Paulette, next month we will have your um, resolution drafted and ready to act on. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank have you. a nice evening. Okay. So, Mr. Technology here is looking for the agenda. One second. Next item. Um, we have a public hearing on an application for special use per permit and site plan approval. Uh, this is a change in use from residential, uh, the rectory to gallery use at 61 Leonard Street. And this is submitted by the Beacon Historical Society uh, who are the owners, excuse me. What does this mean? Owner of St. Joachim's Church. Beacon Historical Peter's Society Rome. owns the church? No. No, that doesn't make sense to me. I, I read that wrong. Forgive me. You know who you are. So welcome. <laughs> so uh, since last month, anything applicant uh, you'd like to uh, share with us? Updates? Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to make this presentation. We think we addressed uh your comments there is again a printing error issue where the scale is slightly off but in general the only thing that i think john clark came back and wants two trees um this is a major thing of import there was a question about uh painting for the handicapped space which we have a note for but we will clarify well anything in, in the comments so i think i'd like to turn it over to the engineers to see okay. if they have and I'll, I'll just stop you right there because I forgot again. I'm going to um, accept a motion to open a public hearing. I was just going to remind you, John. Thanks. Thank you. So Aye. motion by Randall, second by second. Jill, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Aye. Aye. Thanks, JC. Um, okay. So um, did the engineer have anything they wanted to add? Um, uh, applicant engineer. Uh, we got the comments back from the city engineers. Uh, we can address we can address those. Uh, there's nothing we saw of import except for the two trees. The client is 
not keen on putting in the two trees. I, it may be an issue between St. Joachim's and the Beacon Historical Society, and it may be a maintenance issue. Um, we They did show a planting plan, and we were hoping that would satisfy. Uh, we understand the desire for the trees. Uh, there's, there's some desire on my clients and not to put them in. So I'm not sure where we're going to go with that. But obviously, if you guys say we have to, you got to do it. They're not street trees. They're within the property. So just kind of leaving it out there. Last meeting, we had left it with the planting plan, which we showed the uh, species type and the layout for what was proposed. Okay. So we have both um, parking analysis we want to discuss uh, as well as plantings. So let's, let's tackle parking first. So John Clark, I think you'd observed relative to the analysis itself and the resultant um, reflection by the applicant of required spaces that we'd want to see a little bit more um, backup relative to how they arrived at their numbers. Is that right? Yes. Uh, first, I would say that um, the council made changes to the um, the section that qualifies this for an alternative use in the residential district under the uh, historic district overlay. And they transferred the authority from the uh, city council to the planning board. So, the, so as of this meeting, theoretically be, they will be acknowledged by the state, accepted by the secretary of state as a amended law. Um, you won't have to be referred to the council uh, the planning board can make all the decision as to whether this gets a special permit or not. So that's uh, makes your life, the applicant's life a little easier in terms of going back before different bodies, reviewing bodies. Uh, in terms of the parking, um, there is a table on the second page. Um, there's a table on the first page that justifies nine spaces under a museum use. And I checked with the building inspector today, and he was okay qualifying this as a museum. It seems like the best qual quality under the parking statute. So uh, the nine spaces seems more than adequate. Um, but uh, the parking analysis for shared purposes, because there's not enough spaces um, in total for all three uses on the property. So the applicant put in a uh, hours of operation table that shows varying overlapping and not overlapping of hours. And um, I'm satisfied with the shared analysis, but um, the table shows the number of spaces required for each of the three uses, and it doesn't justify how you came up with those, um, those numbers. So if you can, either now or in, uh, for the next um, meeting, provide the calculations so that you could justify 35 spaces for the church and 22 spaces for the school, that would be um, make our lives a little easier in terms of the board discussing shared parking and whether this fits the criteria under the parking regulations. Okay, we can, we can share those calculations. I don't have them in front of me, unfortunately, but uh, I can share them with you and put them on the drawings if that's what we're looking for. That would for. be great. Yes, thank you. It seems to me, you know, the two overlapping, the ones that are overlapping are the school and the historical society. Um, and if the 22 spaces is the correct number for the school and the nine spaces seems to be the correct number for the historical society, then you meet the 31 on-site spaces requirement. Um, so that's the key number, but the board may, you know, have their own opinion about this shared analysis. That's what it seems like to me that uh, the, in the past, the board has a lot of latitude in terms of shared parking if they think that there's not an overload between the three uses because of different peak periods. Um, so as long as they're comfortable with the hours of operations and the number of designated spaces, they can adopt this as a shared parking uh, deduction. Yeah, I'm personally, I have... Um pretty intimate experience with this parking lot is where I drop my daughter off in the mornings um, for preschool. So, you know, just from observation, um, 
the um, there, there's not a heavy impact on actual parking. There's a lot of inflow and outflow just from dropping dropping individuals off. Um, so this this idea of the sort of non simultaneous um, use relative to the church and the school or the church and the historical society, I'm uh, you know this I'm comfortable with. Um, there would be, as you say, John, overlap with um, the school and historical society potentially, but I'm just curious from the applicant, um, how, how much traffic as far as, you know, auto traffic do you expect to generate um, just through the historical society functions? And are there, um, w what are the requirements for staff parking? Is there, are there, you know, on, in, on average two staff, three staff? Uh, on any given day, or uh, just what's the what's the sense there of just how much actual use the parking will get for the excuse me the historical society? Okay, uh, I can answer that if I may. Uh, Diane Lapis, a president of the historical society. Hi, Diane. Hi, um, we are open two days a week on Thursdays from ten to twelve, and Saturdays from one to three, and then by appointment. Oh, second Saturdays are we have extended hours, twelve to four. Um, we have our usual volunteers come in. We have about three or four volunteers at a time. And visitors vary between one visitor to f maybe four families that will come in to do research. Um, we do have special events and those we will time with the church's schedule so that there's no impact on their events and our events, which is what so we do with St. Andrews as well. We always got yeah. permission from Father John at St. Andrews. Uh, so there, there should not be any issues regarding the number of you know spaces being used. Great, and my, my daughters have volunteered there before and they're not of driving age yet. So um, there wouldn't be any impact there. So, uh, and thanks for all the really great work you guys do. Oh, thank you, you're welcome. Um, and just the other quick question I have is, um, there's parking shown on um, street are those currently striped? Or are they in, are they intended to be, or or um, how? John, uh, Gary might be able to answer that better. Gary Barrick. Yes, they're not striped, but there's parking all along Leonard Street on both sides, except for a designated area uh, for the driveways for the, the apartments across the street, and uh, there's a, two fire hydrants, but. Uh, there's really parking on both sides, although there's only a curb on the uh, east side of, of uh, Leonard Street. Yeah, that's good to know. So if, if I were to park in front of the Historical Society to drop my daughter off, nobody's going to bust me? No. As long as you're 10 feet from uh, from Grove Street. Yep, got it. We make the turn there, I believe there's a 10 feet, 10 foot uh, uh, restriction. Great. Um any other thoughts around the board on the parking? Start with you, Randall. No, I'm good with it, actually. I think it, you know, I'm familiar with it. I don't, I don't see it being an issue, so I'm good with it. Okay. Len, what are your thoughts? Uh, I don't have any questions on the parking. Did we resolve that the issue with the one space that we were concerned that, uh, you know, on the, off the corner of the garage, that there was going to be a clearance issue for pulling out of? Yeah. Yeah, that's been effectively removed from okay. use by anyone parking, um, as it's been indicated as um, being um, hashed off. I don't know what you call that. What's the technical right. word for it? Yeah, it's like hashed out. Okay, and yeah. I, I and I I appreciate John Clark's uh, request that we just get the backup on the on the number of spaces, right? That based on the use. Yep. Okay, great. Thanks, Len. Um, Jill. Um, I'm just wondering about the parking for the school use. I, I'm assuming that's on hold for now, school, correct? No, no, schools, no. <laughs> it depends, although the numbers are climbing and they have a threshold for when they will, um, at least for the middle school, uh, suspend activities. But I um, know uh, they're still actively very carefully, I have to say, they do a very good job, the school, of um, being very careful about uh, receiving and having students. So still active. Okay. Um, so I, I don't really have any comments. Looks fine to me. 
Great. Thanks, Jill. Kevin? Um, I think it's fine. There's no way that this, I, I can't imagine that there'll be a, uh, uh, any parking problems at this location myself. All right. Um, JC, any thoughts? Uh, nothing remarkable. Uh, nothing. Okay. Did I miss anyone? No. Uh, good. So let's talk about trees. <laughs> um, so the recommendation by the board on um, uh, John's impetus was that um, the applicant um, facilitate planting of street trees. Uh, and so we heard from the applicant that they'd rather not. Uh, I'm just curious, is there is there a reason applicant why this is something you'd not wanna undertake? Yes, uh, John, the uh... We plan, we're planning on putting our sign on the left side as you're facing the rectory on the left-hand side. Yeah, see that. Right around the spot we want to put it, there is a gas meter. We're going to, we're going to tomorrow, I'm going to give 811 a call and have him mark it out. But I'm concerned that there's a, a gas line running right where we would probably put the tree. And the property line ends almost at the end of the building. So there's not much space that would uh, uh, that would not interfere with the gas line or interfere with the sign that we're planning on putting there. So, uh, I mean, I don't know. It, it, it just seems like wherever the tree is, it will block one side of the sign or the other, or it will interfere with the gas line that comes in from the street. Mm. We think the gas line comes straight to where the meter is, which is in the dead center of the building on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, there's, you know, I, I mean, we can put a tree there if you wanted, but. Uh, well, I would want to say if, if, a if. Single tree wouldn't, I don't know if it would be aesthetically. Uh, yeah, I would you know, say probably. if of a certain age and height, on that particular side, um, I wouldn't want anything obstructing views. Hey, Teresa, can you mute? Um, I wouldn't want to obstruct. I even recognize your voice when you're whispering, Teresa. Um, of people coming in and out of the driveway. Um, so in my view, it, you know, it, it's always nice to have additional plantings. Um, Gary, is the Historical Society planning any sort of landscaping? The landscaping is in. It's been completed. Okay. It looks great. Next time you go by, ch check it out. Uh, when There's was it put in? trees and landscaping around the building. When was that done? Uh, about a week ago. Oh, I, got, I was there yesterday yeah, or today i gotta pay more attention <laughs> yeah, check it out it looks yeah. very nice very attractive um i personally would go so far as to say though um you know we do like to see applicants um add trees um and i think in this instance you've done some landscaping already um i personally wouldn't um, necessarily hold you to that requirement um, let's get thoughts around the board. Jill. Um, so the question is whether to put the tree in. Yeah. Whether we're going to require the applicant as a board to plant street trees. Um, street tr is it street trees or street tree? How many did you recommend, John? I'm forgetting. I suggested two. This is a particularly barren portion of the street. There's three trees on the other side of the street, but almost nothing on this side. So I suggested, I mean, it is a one-way street. The the um, sign only has to be read from one direction from a car. So um, it seems to me you could find places to put a street tree um, that avoid the gas line and the sign. Um, we require, we have required street trees on a lot of different new applications. It's pretty much everything we do. We try to reinforce trees in the city uh, for the greenhouse effect and, and uh, heat island effect and uh, to yep. frame the streets and uh, protect the sidewalks in terms of people walking and all that sort of thing. 
Uh, John, I've got a quick question. Is there any, is there any um, requirement for the size, age, caliper of a street tree? Uh, the only requirement is if it's in a parking lot. Um, so it's, it's flexible in terms of what can happen. And we, we generally try to get a two and a half inch caliper tree or something to that effect. Is that classified as a sapling? Mm, well, um, what was it? The other, no. Uh, at any rate, yeah, no, we try to we try to get something significant enough that it can last, doesn't get busted off, you know, if, uh, as, but yeah, two and a half inch caliper tree is usually six, seven, eight feet tall. Um, may I may I interject, Mr. Clark, that um, we are expecting walkers coming from Main Street up Leonard, and we are concerned that a tree would block the sign from that direction. But it, it shouldn't really because the, the tree is over the sign unless you're going to put in a really high sign. Um, it, from a sidewalk, a tree won't block a, a, uh, a walker to be able to see a sign. But um, I'm just saying we, we did it for a variety of different applicants. We've required them to put in street trees as part of their application. So I was thinking in particular because this section of the block, there are two small trees right in front of the church. Mm -hmm. but nothing from the church on down to the end of Grove Street there. Okay, thanks, John. Um, let's get further thoughts. Were you finished, um, Jill? No, so yep. I, I was actually just looking at uh, Dutchess County parcel access to figure out, to find out who owns that corner lot. Do we know? The church owns it. The church owns it. It does, okay. So what about doing some trees there? I see there was one, there was one on the corner that's been cut down. But that's not the parcel that we're renting from. Yeah, that's not a that would be the separate parcel. Uh, to the um, Good point. Um, um, I, I guess I don't feel qualified to make that. I, I don't know all the constraints. So I, I hesitate to mandate one way or the other. I'll go so far as to say there is there is a there is potential for you know there is room and potential for a tree on the if you're looking at the building um, mm -hmm. right side. Um, I see um, the I other thing that would have to be taken mm -hmm. into account as far as placement of the tree is water service and sewer service to this building. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. Yeah, um, point Gary, well made. Um, are there any, do you know if there's any utilities over on the other side of the lot in the front, Gary? Uh, I don't believe there is. I think they all come from Leonard Street. I know the electricity comes in from, uh, the electric comes in from the front right-hand corner, but it's overhead line. Yeah. But uh, where the sewer is, I'm not sure. Sewer lines. Uh, okay. Well, let's keep going. Kevin, what do you think? Yeah, it's a uh, it's a fairly uh, uh, bare site. It would definitely be visually improved by having a tree uh, on the right hand side. I think if if you could practically do it, uh, because it's a church and it's a nonprofit, uh, I would. Uh, uh, I, I'd, I'd be sensitive to their uh, their request to not uh, not have to pay for that. Personally, I think it would be uh, it would be a benefit. I think it's something that we should encourage, but I don't know if I want to uh, I want to require it. Is 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 cost an issue and the idea that you're not necessarily permanent tenants? I mean, I know you have a probably have a long term lease, but is that is that an issue that you'd be planting a tree for someone well, else's ownership? The, let's put it this way: it wasn't in the budget. Ah, okay. <laughs> It'd be an easy thing to fundraise for. I'm just saying. We have a lot. <laughs> we have a lot to fundraise for, including the rent. <laughs> so. There you go. <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> you know better than anyone. I mean, we're not opposed to trees. We're tree lovers here. Um, right. uh, it, it's really what Gary, you know, what Gary's constraints are in terms of the gas line and the sign blockage, and also. Yeah. If we would put it to on this the north side, I guess it would be to not block the sign from cars, and and also coming out of the driveway. That is good. Shouldn't be um, any imp impediment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
who else? Randall, did we cover you as far as yeah, trees? I'm just, I'm just saying that I'm not a, I wouldn't want to mandate the trees as being part of it. I, you know, I understand and respect the ability that, you know, the value they would bring, but um, I don't think I'd want to make it a, a, a condition. It's just my opinion. Um, Len, what are you, did we already cover you, Len? No, but um, I think I kind of, you know, I would probably echo what the others have said. It's, it's unfortunate that the lot seems, you know, is kind of constrained for this building. It would be great to see the utilities on a map so that we could wrap our heads around what was really possible or, or feasible. But I also, um, you know, given that these are two not, not for profits and I appreciate the mission of the Beacon Historical Society, I don't, you know, I'm not inclined to, to twist their arm. It's, it is, um, and I don't know whether the, I know that we can't stray onto the other lots owned by the church to, to serve this need, which is unfortunate. And maybe they use them for events or something, but yeah, they are, there's a lot of just open lawn that's really flat and, and um, kind of monotonous, especially on the corner. Yeah. Um, okay. If a group of, if a group of, citizens showed up one day in your property with a tree and wanted to plant it, would you mind? I, I don't think that would be a problem as long as it doesn't conflict with that gas line. And it's always a great way to memorialize an individual. So yeah. it's uh, it's late in the season now to plant anyway. So the first opportunity would be spring. Um, anyway, uh, anyone else on the board that wanted to opine on trees? JC, yeah, you're on mute. Yeah, sorry. So, yeah, I had, a, I mean, I, I, I agree with generally the statements made. I think that um, I would encourage the applicant to reconsider, you know, one tree, again, not on the um, east side where the gas line is, but on the west side, where if you look at the existing photo, um, where uh, the second photo on the, on the site plan, where it shows a shadow that's cast by the building, the sun, um, I imagine if there was a tree on that west side, would provide some nice shade in the summer when people are arriving to the building. And I, I always find, um, you know, location of a tree in relation to the south sun, you know, important. And that would be, I think, a preferable place, even if there wasn't a gas line on the east side, because, because of that shadow, the, the building is already casting a shadow on the east side in summertime. No. So you don't need that tree for shadow on the right, but on the west side, it would serve a good purpose, you know, when you're, when you're, you know, when people wanna mingle in the front of the building. And, and I think that would be a nice amenity. Yeah, I think, I think the general consensus is, yeah, we're, we're all in favor of trees. We love trees. Um, we can understand some of the constraints um, and we understand the applicant's reluctance for the reasons stated. Um, it, it, it sounds to me as though there are other opportunities outside of this application to see some um, landscape improvements um, through uh, community action. Um, and so for that reason, uh, it doesn't sound like, and you all just let me know again, but it, it sounds to me, based on our recent conversation and, and, and going around, that we're, we're not necessarily inclined to make this a requirement of the applicant. Have I said anything that's um, incorrect? I agree with the way you're couching it. Yes, I agree. Okay. Okay. Great, right. Randall, Kevin. Uh, yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, yes. yes. Yeah, and again, uh, we're all, we're always aware, and and thank you, John, of precedent setting, precedent setting, and of um, requirements that we have made of other applicants. I don't think this will um, alleviate us of being as considerate. Uh, in future applications, but I think this one um, has some unique uh, elements to it. Um, so in that case, I think then um, that will not be a requirement of this application. Um, so in that regard, in that um, 
being said, I just wanted to make sure we still have the public hearing open. Etha, has anyone else made themselves? No. Um, oh, Teresa. Great. Can I speak now, John? You may. Yes. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> I'm all alone in my office. That was not me before. Oh, it wasn't. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so I'm here in full support of this project and appeal to the planning board to approve this special use permit and site plan approval requested by the Beacon Historical Society to use the existing St. Joachim's Rectory as their new location for the Society's headquarters. This larger space and location will offer much needed space for Beacon's massive collection that only continues to grow. I live in this neighborhood and see daily that the existing parking lot is underused. 61 Leonard Street is an ideal location and a wonderful space for Beacon's residents and tourists alike to delve into Beacon's history collection. Plus, the potential to use a co-shared larger parking lot is an important element for the programming potential. As this is only a rental agreement, I'm not sure why it would be required for a tenant to plant trees. And Gary Barrick of the Tyronda Garden Club would be the expert in plantings. I hope in the long run the city steps up and gives this organization the Mace Firehouse Building for a permanent location directly across from the oldest house in Dutchess County. That would be a great history package for tourism dollars in the city coffers. Thank you. Thanks, Teresa. Plus, if we, put up, if we put up a tree, we'll wreck the view of the mountain from Grove Street, thereby killing another <laughs> potential view shed. Uh, it's, it's always some... It's always something. <laughs> Good point, Len. Uh, Atha, anyone else no. waiting to be heard? Okay. Um, I will accept a motion to close the public hearing. Motion. Motion by Randall. Second. Second. Second by Kevin. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then um, applicants agreed to submit. Um, parking analysis backup right yep and with that mm -hmm. i am i will accept the motion to authorize um our city attorney to draft um resolution for approval site plan and um special use permit um with um the condition that the parking analysis backup information be provided and uh any other relevant um notes um made by our city attorney excuse me city engineer and planner um not including the requirement for the planting the trees you got what you need jennifer oh wait motion i'll make the motion do i have a second 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 by who was that uh -oh. randall randall. Oh. Was it randall quick with you're quick with your mute button randall um all in favor aye aye aye, aye. aye. Okay. So Can I just say something about the confusion with the mute buttons is it says mute. And so I think I'm, I'm mute. And so <laughs> you just <laughs> muted yourself. <laughs> exactly. So it's confusing. <laughs> Are you, you're on zoom. All you have to do is either leave yourself unmuted. And if you're not muted, you won't see a little red yeah. thing across your microphone icon. It, the wording is always, it's always what you want to do, not where you are. Yeah. It's counterintuitive. <laughs> That's the only technical thing I know is how to unmute and unmute. unmute this is myself. just an unnatural way to, to be with people. Okay. But we can all agree on that. It is. Although you got to admit after 10 months, we're getting, you know, we're getting kind of good at this. Hey, I'm yeah, getting pretty good at it. I don't see us ever going back to sitting in those damn uncomfortable, yeah. uh, uncomfortable chairs in the courtroom. And I refuse to go back until somebody buys a new chair, new set of chairs for that courtroom. I think they're on order. Yeah. Uh, I second that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I think uh, at least for this application, we have taken care of what we need to. Uh, is there anything else, uh, Diane or Gary? Uh, I would just like us? to invite you all when we're all able to come to see our new home. Yeah, I can't wait. So when do you plan on, when do you plan on being up and running? We, we hope to move in January. Oh, oh excellent. Yeah. And and then open at that point? Well, we're not open to the public right now due to COVID. So we'll have to come up with a, a safe plan in terms of inviting guests and researchers in. 
Okay. Just because now I, I never really had the opportunity because you're on the other end of town from me as yeah. much as I'd love to come by. But now that I'm, you know, I got a couple extra minutes after I'm dropping my daughter off. Um, I'd love to come yeah. in and say hi. Love to see you all. We have an yeah. amazing collection. Well, great. Thank you. I have a technical question. Are they on the agenda for next month or no? Yes, right? Yes, because okay. no resolution has been, the, the application right. hasn't been finalized yet. The resolution will be available for the next okay. meeting. Thank yeah. you. Great. Thanks, Atta. Um, I think that covers it then. All right. Thank um, you. Good night, everybody. Have a happy holiday. Thank you. You too. Thank All you very right. much. Good, you. good to thank see you me. again, Gary. I see thank you. you. All right. So next item on the agenda is a, a new item, our review of an application for site plan approval. Um, this is actually it's new but old. Um, this is for the addition of a rear yard open pavilion at 184 Main, otherwise known as um, MOD, right? So do we have the applicant with us? Yes. Uh, good evening. Hi. Hi, my name is Don Petrancola. I'm an architect with Liska McCormick Van Voorhis. Um, I'm joined tonight by Mike Arnoff and Brian and Lisa Arnoff as well. A uh, quick summary on this job. Uh, this project received approval from the City of Beacon Planning Board to complete a full renovation in addition to the existing restaurant located at 184 Main Street uh, in October 8th of 2019. Uh, we're before you tonight for an amended site plan approval to move forward with a much reduced design. Um, the project was halted um, in terms of all construction plans once COVID hit. Um, so what we are, we've tried to model the new project um, in reaction to uh, our new environment. And we're requesting tonight approval on a slightly different plan, offering an improvement to what is a pre-existing open air dining space at the rear of the property. Um, presently, it is a rear yard patio. And during this summer and fall, it has received greatly increased usage by both locals and visitors. Um, our plan is to still renovate the existing building as approved in the October 8th, 2019 resolution. We are modifying our scope of work only to eliminate the approved rear yard building addition and instead construct in the same location an open sided pavilion. Um, we propose to upgrade the existing gravel patio surface to a washable concrete surface and replace the existing wood fence with new wood fencing. Uh, we intend to place a 60 square foot cooler at the rear of the patio, which uh, enables the interior kitchen renovation to take place. Um, the drawings have been presented to the building inspector. Uh, we have included in our application the selected paint color for the exterior new components to include the facade repair and reconstruction. And um, we are looking for an amendment to this approved site plan, uh, modifying again the single story addition to this open air pavilion um, and to uh, uh, um, the pavilion um, is not visible from the main street. So in our opinion, it's a significantly lesser impact than what was previously approved. Um, ideally, we would request a conditional approval tonight predicated upon satisfactory resolution of the engineers and planners comments. Um, with that in mind, we have received those. We're prepared to discuss those comments and answer any questions that you may have. I, I got, I've got a question right out of the gate. Um, I, I'm confused and it's through no fault of you. It's probably me, but you mentioned that you're still you're you're planning to still continue the work of the first application, which I remember well, and that this is a new application just for the pavilion. Is that right? But you're we, calling it amend. You're calling it an amended. Uh, how does this? How does this? How is this structured? Just in terms of what we, you're doing we and what you're to not the, doing. We submitted to the building department. The building department said, "No, you can't. We can't give you a permit." because you need to have an amended site plan approval. The site plan resolution that is in place references a rear yard addition uh, with the interior renovation. And you're not doing a rear yard addition, enclosed addition, you're doing an open pavilion. So therefore you have to go back to the planning board and here we are. 
uh, for that amendment. Okay, I'm still confused. Um, <laughs> so again, you are planning to continue with- uh, Chairman uh, Gunn, maybe I can help. Yeah, thank you. I was hoping somebody would jump in. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah, so I think what, you know, as far as the amend, amended site plan application goes, basically, I think what the applicant is saying is they are planning to do everything from the original application, except for what they're proposing here to change the rear, the rear addition. There was going to so be a there was going to be a one story. Everything from that prior application should be carried forward on the current set of plans. That's why I'm except confused. Except for what they're proposing okay, be, now. Because it looks as though. I think there's though, a little bit of confusion as far as what is shown on those plans currently. So if I got this right, and bear with me, because I, I just I need to work work through this because it's, it 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 appears as though this is a brand new application for just the pavilion in the back. The way it's the way it was submitted, but what I'm hearing is this is an amendment to the original application, which you still plan on proceeding with the original approval, and so therefore we should we should see this as a complete package amended with these changes, and it's not that's not how it's reflected in the documentation. Do I have that right? So, yeah, so no, therefore, do. therefore, we would expect to see all of those elements that were previously a pre meaning. We would expect to see an amended submission, right, in its entirety. Does that make sense, John? That, um, you, is, John, just to try to clarify your question, is what you are requesting um, something that's sort of like a red line so that you can clearly see what was previously approved and not being changed versus what is being changed? No, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that because they've made changes I mean, and it would be clear just through comparing the previous submission to the amended submission, what's changed, hmm. that they reflect as a part of this amendment everything that was otherwise previously approved and that they're planning to continue to proceed with, as well as those things that they're changing. And through this conversation, because then then it's a complete amended application, if you know what I mean. Yeah, that's what I mean by like a red line. So yeah, you I mean, can the, clearly distinguish what was originally approved and is gonna continue. Right, you know, a formal site plan, amended site plan submission showing <laughs> everything as on the previous plan. If you recall, there was a, a tree to be planted out front that was approved. That's not shown on here. It showed the lighting along the exactly. side of the building. That's not there. So basically an amended site plan should show all the previous stuff that was on the approved plan, less the changes that they're making. Right, and, and so to Kevin, to make a finer point, I wouldn't necessarily need to see it bubbled or highlighted or redlined what they've changed. It's, it's more through their descriptive, you know, in this um, forum as to why they're amending their application. As long as the final submission reflects the total application as amended and, and, and those things that were previously approved. Does that make sense applicant, Donald or Mike? I think that's fine. I, I don't believe that there's anything other than the um, easement lighting and the street tree that was not shown. Um, obviously, we've changed horses with the design professionals on this, so that's why the drawings are not reflective of what uh, Mr. Alfandre had submitted um, last year. So we can certainly uh, clarify uh, anything that was approved in the last site plan um, resolution and incorporate that onto the set of drawings. Uh, we have no issue with the, um, with the uh, lighting that was proposed and, and approved for the easement um, access. Uh, we did want to speak a little bit about the new street tree when we're ready. Boy. Yeah. Us. What do you got? Um, the it is our understanding, um, and perhaps um, Mike might want to talk about this. That there was some concerns from the DPW about the installation of the street tree. They advised the applicant that they could not break up the existing sidewalk or open it. Uh, that they have to do that. They were 
not inclined to make that opening. They were concerned about snow removal um, and uh, um, would prefer not to put the street tree in. So there seems to be a bit of a disconnect between the planning board's desire for street trees and DPW's, um, um, you know, uh, um, enthusiasm to go about doing that. We have no issue. If you want the street tree, we'll put the street tree in. But there were those DPW concerns we wanted to make you aware of. And, you know, based on Mr. Clark's presentation at the beginning of the meeting, you know, I would also have concerns about the street tree eventual viewshed impact. And, and Ch Chairman, try. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Chairman Gunn, just to reiterate what uh, Mr. Petricola said, um, the tree is not the issue. Just, I just need some guidance. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I understand. On how we would actually go about cutting the sidewalk and making sure that we follow the proper methodology for installing. Sure. So, John Russo, I saw you look as confused as I was when that was mentioned. What, what is the typical procedure around coordinating with the city on planting street trees? Basically, they would file for a road opening permit with the city, which would get approved by the highway department. Um, there would be details in there with regards to the curbs, the sidewalks. Uh, as far as the planting, that would have to come from their consultants uh, as far as planting details, although the city can help them out. Uh, with regards to tree wells, as far as what we're looking for. Um, but I've never heard of them not allowing somebody to open it up as long as they did acquire the proper permits and provided the proper insurance and bonding. Could be a misinterpretation. Well, the, um, the street tree was approved previously. So we've got those details. We've got the information. We can just carry that right on over into this application. Uh, onto these drawings for you. Great. So, so it's clear that there's there's no mechanism whereby the city would otherwise discourage you. Very clear. It's very clear. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Good. So, so we we understand now, uh, all of us, what the submission needs to contain, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Would, and um, we can I would talk. Like to clarify that, if I can. Um, it seems to me the previous application that was approved, there's almost nothing that's consistent with this this application. The other application was going to tear down the front of the building and move the door over to the left side of the facade. Uh, they were going to put an addition to the back, and except for the location of the garbage can. It seems to me like it's more of a new application because you're leaving the front alone or are you intending eventually to do the, the previous application? Uh, are That's you a good question too. The long run and you want to keep that alive as a eventual approved site plan because what you're what you're showing on the plans is almost entirely new uh, and different from the previous site plan mm -hmm. that was approved. And I wasn't clear about that, whether it should be amended or a brand new site plan, because mm -hmm. um, I don't know if this is a sort of a temporary thing until the COVID is over and then you'll expand according to the original one and move the door, or you have a whole new plan here and this is the way it's going to be for the time being. The facade yeah. reconstruction is planned to be as shown on these drawings rather than relocating the door. Um, the, in, the open air pavilion in the rear is not intended to be temporary. Um, so, um, the direction we received from the city was to file for an amended site plan rather than an entirely new one. Um, so that's what we're, we're doing. I mean, the first submission to the planning board on this uh, project, uh, included a second story. So we right. have been through several iterations right. all within one application. Right. Yeah, so, look, honestly, I don't, I personally don't care whether it's, you know, it's submitted as an amendment or a new application, whatever it is, needs to reflect what you're actually going to do. I think it makes it more confusing if you, if you consider it amended, because there's a lot of things you'll have to take off that were never built. So what I suggested in my letter is that all you have to do is show an existing conditions map mm -hmm. and a proposed conditions map. 
um, so that we're clear about what's being proposed and what's already there, and particularly the back of the property, which is where your most of your changes are. And um, put a note on the plan that makes it consistent with the old plan in terms of the, the tree and the, the alleyway easement, which were left off. So that's my opinion based on what I know. Um, that seems like the easiest way to go rather than trying to do a red line version of something that never got accomplished and you don't want to do in the future. Yeah, this is Jennifer. I, you know, I agree. I don't think we need a red line. I think that, you know, whether you call it an amended application or a new application, it's kind of semantics. I think at the end of the day, whatever site plan is approved through this current process that we're in should reflect the totality of all improvements that are going to be installed at the property from today going forward. Can I? Can you I said it far better than I did. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm, I'm also a little confused and I just wanted to clarify, you're wanting to maintain your, uh, the approval for the additional square footage. And that's part of, is that part of the intent of doing, you, you're not, you're abandoning the second, the approval of the second floor and the other additional square footage. I'm, I'm, that's correct. The second floor was abandoned is. before okay. the uh, October approval. And now the, what okay. we're doing is abandoning the enclosed rear addition in okay. favor of an open air pavilion. Okay, gotcha. I, I just, I didn't know if this was an attempt to uh, do an interim, uh, an interim open air thing during COVID and then maintain your ability uh, to increase that square footage later without reapplying. No. Okay. Then, yeah, I, Jennifer, it makes sense. Uh, what Jennifer was saying makes sense then. Yep. Okay. So we're clear. And, 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 and based on that, um, Donald, um, your request for a conditional approval tonight just can't make it. We need to see the full and complete application. In her um, nice try. <laughs> um, and to that end, unless there's anything else. I do have a couple more questions. Technical any of the questions. board members, hang on. I got I got board members that might want to weigh in. Um, so, Kevin, anything else you wanted to add? Um, there's a lot of detail, and one of the things I'm sure John will bring up is the uh, fence enclosure around the um, the dumpster and the outdoor the walk-in. Yeah, that's going to be an issue, but I'm, I'm sure there'll be some time to attend to the design details. Yeah, and, and John John had actually memorialized that as a a mention in his review letter as well. Um, uh, JC, thoughts? Uh, you're on mute, JC. Right. No, nothing, nothing remarkable. I, I, I do think uh, it's, it's good to recognize that the, the scope has diminished substantially. And I, th I think uh, that's certainly favorable from my point of view on the, on the part of the developer, so. Yep, okay, thanks JC. Uh, Len, anything you wanted to add or ask? No, no questions right now. Great. Jill? Uh, no questions right now, I guess. Okay. And what about you, Randall? Where'd you go? There you yeah, go. No questions, nothing there. Okay. So no Thank you. I'm going to try and say your last name and I'm going to get it wrong. Mr. Petrincola. Did I say Very that right? Good. Very good. Thank you. Okay, um, we have been in touch with uh, Hudson Land Design, a neighbor to MOD, and uh, regarding the request for percolation tests. And their recommendation is to pursue a use of HDPE infiltration chambers, similar to what's used in septic system trenches. And in that way, we have a lower, a shallower excavation um, for both the installation as well as the perk testing. Uh, I don't know, John, do you have any thoughts on that? So the other concern I have with the dry well or any system you put back there is what are the impacts of the infiltrating water onto the neighboring foundation? You know, do they have basements in there? Are you going to infiltrate that water through the ground and through their foundation or impact their foundation in any which way? I know you don't have any basement in that area. I don't know if the existing building has a basement or if it's a slab on grade, um, but the neighboring building, if they have a basement, you could be uh, creating hydrostatic pressure on their foundation walls. 
but we're not creating any additional runoff or water than what currently exists. Or does all the water, because you're connecting downspouts to this area, you're taking all the roof water from this uh, pavilion and funneling it into a specific area. Do the downspouts drain there now? Downspouts just splash out to gray. Out to gray, but are they all centralized or to a focal point such as this? There's one, there's one drain, yeah. So it is a local focal point. Okay, well, that's all gonna have to be taken into consideration because what happens with the water that hits the ground now? Does it run off or does it actually infiltrate into the ground in that area? Well, at this point it runs off and infiltrates. So there is, we haven't had issues with um, um, extensive ponding or icing in the winter. Okay. Uh, it would be interesting, we can find out whether or not the neighbors even have basements. That would be, or to even see if they've, uh, if they do, if they've had any water impacts. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, um, once you find that information out, you know, there's multiple different systems out there that can be looked at. Um, it's just making sure that we're not putting something underground that's not going to operate. Sure. I just uh, figured it would be better. To, uh, you know, we're trying to come up with a better solution than just a, uh, splash pads at grade. Um, and uh, if the HDPE infiltration chambers are uh, an acceptable system to the uh, city, then I think that is something that we will ask Hudson Land Design to pursue. Yeah, so there, there's that system. There's other systems out there. The thing is the soil testing and making sure there's no impact on your adjacent neighbors. Okay. The other question I had was in relation to Mr. Clark's uh, comments and the proposed cooler in the rear yard setback. Um, this cooler is a movable piece of equipment. In our opinion, no, real, no different than a, than a generator. Um, so how do we define and clarify that as, as a structure because it has a door? And, 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 you know, how does the planning board want to treat that? Because we can't do this project without creating this exterior piece of equipment. Um, I talked to the building inspector about this and uh, we looked at the definitions. It does seem to fit the definition of a structure um, or a building because it has a roof. It has, it's permanently fixed to the ground um, it's not movable in the sense that it's, uh, you know, like a garbage can or something. It's, it's going to sit there. So um, it was his opinion that it can't be in that 10 foot rear yard setback. What if you this cool talk to him and if you have an argument to make, um, he's the one who has to make that final determination. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, it fits the, fits the definition of a structure and, um, and doesn't fit the definition of an open yard which is what the definition of a rear yard is, an open space between the property line and the, a structure or a building. John, how, how is that different than a shed? Well, residential districts have a ability to put accessory structures in their setbacks with certain, in the, uh, with shorter setbacks essentially, instead of the full rear yard, they can have a certain structure under a certain size but the commercial district doesn't provide any of such um, such accessory structure ability in the setback. Now, couldn't a, a generator be placed in a setback? And a generator is fixed to a pad. You can make a case to the building inspector, but I... Um, I talked to him yesterday, and when we went over the definitions, he agreed that this is more than a garbage can or something that fixes to a building. That, that it, this is a full-blown structure. It has a roof. It has a, um, a um, uh, walls. It has a door. It, it's attached to the ground. It, admits the, it makes the uh, definition. Okay, so we need to follow up with Mr. Buckley on on that. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that's that was my major problem is I can't see how that uh, can be placed in the rear yard. You already have a variance to reduce the amount of your rear yard, 
Right. You can't eliminate what's left. Right. Um, that has to be considered open land between the fence line and the and any permanent sorts of structure. Yeah, Even the though applicant it's would with, have uh, the applicant would have the opportunity to go to the zoning board to seek a further variance um, if that was the route that the applicant wanted to take, assuming uh, Dave Buckley, the building inspector's determination, you know, stands with respect to whether that's a structure in the setback. Okay, I think we know what we need to follow up on that. Okay, great. Anything else we can do for you tonight? And on right. the, um, the residential district where the historical society was, there is a provision in the code in the central Main Street district that the board shall require street trees. Um, so there's a real requirement for street trees where one is missing. And in this case, uh, if you look out on that block, there's trees every 30 feet or so, except for in front of this building. So that's the reason it was required in the first place. And if you're having trouble with the um, highway department, then um, you know we, sh we should be able to work that out because they should be encouraging street trees as well. They may not want to do the work, but they should be willing to accept the idea of a street tree in that, in that area, consistent with the trees on both sides of it. That's fine. We have no issue with that. We'll, we'll definitely be pursuing and getting that result. Okay. Thanks. The uh, fencing it was not defined, but we intend to do that as a shadow box fence, dog ear type is six foot tall. Is that acceptable? Would that be acceptable to the planning board? Would. Okay. Yep. We'll incorporate those details as well. As long as it's no more than six feet high. That's right. Okay. All right. Great. Anything else? Do you have anything else, Mike, you want to bring up? Uh, not at this point. Thank you. Great. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Um, Can I ask a quick question, John? Very quick. That? JC. Yes, yeah. of course. There's two windows in the kitchen, um, Don. Are those operable windows? Are they clerestory? Because I thought that the adjacent building was... I'm just curious if those are existing operable windows uh, or new windows in the kitchen. Brian, Brian perhaps you can address yeah, that. Yeah, I thought that those windows were fixed. The windows are existing in the uh, back part of the building. They are. They do not open, though. Are they historical windows that were blocked by the adjacent building? Uh, what part of one window is blocked by the adjacent building? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're not changing that that win those windows. Those windows. Are That's correct. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All right, great. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you, um, Donald, Mike, and Brian. We'll see you next month. Thank you. I understand our deadline for next submission is the what date? The 29th or 26th? The December 29th, 3 o'clock. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks. Um, Does this need a public hearing? No. It needs one, yes. Well, no, I'm sorry. I thought you were asking if this was currently a public hearing. We're no, no. Um, so, uh, are you what you were saying, John? We should. I would like schedule to schedule a public hearing. Long. I'm sure the applicant would like that. So maybe getting the public hearing going next month would at least get that out of the way. So one thing to keep in mind is if the application does need a variance for that rear yard situation, um, the planning board has two options. The planning board can refer the application to the zoning board for that variance. Um, and I would recommend that, that that should occur before you open your public hearing um, or uh, the, the planning board can consider the application, approve the application subject to the applicant receiving the necessary variance. So it's just a matter of whether the, the variance gets reviewed and approved during the course of your review or as a condition of your approval before any building permits are issued. 
but it, do, it does make a difference as far as the timing for the scheduling of the public hearing. Uh, Jennifer, uh, thank you. And John, thank you for jumping in on the public hearing. Uh, I think what we'll try to do is do some design work here on, on the, in the next couple of days to see if there's some way that we can move that um, uh, cooler, uh, portable cooler unit um, outside of the um, 10 foot setback. And, uh, and then that would uh, allow us not to have to go that route. So, so instead of public hearing, just in case. Yeah, there that's fine. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. So, so we'll do that motion to set a public hearing for next month's meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Kevin. Second. So JC raising his hand second by JC all in favor. Aye. 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 All right. Thanks, John. Um, so we're off the regular agenda on to miscellaneous business. Um, I'm going to call for a real quick two minute break, if y'all don't mind. Um, and then we'll get back to miscellaneous business. I'll be right back. So it looks like we're still waiting for a few people to come back on. Um, back. Beth is back. JC's back. Hi, Jill. Jennifer's back. Randall, you back? You're always on mute. And, yep. Um, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Len. Great. There's Kevin. Um, who else are we waiting for? I guess that's it. Um, so we're on to miscellaneous business. Um, so we'll proceed. Uh, number one, Zoning Board of Appeals. There's no December meeting, so therefore nothing to discuss. Um, Motion to dismiss. <laughs> dismiss? What? Who is that, Jill? Huh? You're 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 facile with the mute button when you want to get out of here. Um, number two on the agenda for Miss Lee's business is uh, Forestall Heights existing wireless telecommunications facility equipment upgrades. Um, as the way I understand it, there is a memo uh, prepared provided to us by David Buckley, our city building inspector. Uh, having reviewed this um, application um, and um, offering his 
view that based on his review of the materials provided, the proposed application to install new transmission equipment on the existing structure located at 1-2 Forestall Heights will not substantially change the dimensions of the existing structure. And he's accompanying this note with a chart to assist the planning board in our review. Um, but his ultimate um, observation is that the planning board should deem this application an eligible facility request. Um, so um, in, in my review of Dave's letter and the quick chart he put together, uh, I'm in agreement. Um, let's just go around the board and get thoughts. Uh, let's start with Jill. I feel like I, I, I only have Dave's um, report to go on. So yeah, I, I will note, Dave. sorry to interrupt. I will note that as a part of um, our review, we have been provided with the application material um, via our emails. Um, I'll, I'll just mention that. So, but uh, sorry, continue, Jill. Um, yeah. I mean, having looked it over, I just, uh, again, I guess I don't feel very qualified to, to say much more than that I, I feel Dave has a good estimate, estimation of what's going on, so. I'm looking at this, re-looking yeah. at it. Okay, we'll come back if you have any more thoughts. If I can, John, can I just interject? Yeah, please. So, um, so the issue here is obviously whether it's an eligible facilities request, which in order to be determined an eligible, uh, eligible facilities request, it needs to basically check a bunch of boxes to make sure that what's being proposed in these upgrades um, doesn't substantially change the physical dimensions of the existing structure, the existing facilities out there. So there are actually a number of like statutory questions that Dave goes through and that's in that chart um, that, that Dave provided. I think it's provided not as an attachment to the memo in your in the agenda materials, but as a separate link if you're looking for it. Um, yeah, and basically yep. he reviewed the plans against the, these questions and determined that no, for each of them, uh, the, the, the plans do not reflect um, that there are, there's going to be a substantial change in the physical dimensions of, of the existing infrastructure in such a way that would require it to go for further review. Um, eligible facility request just means that they would be issued a building permit administratively without having to, um, you know, to, to okay. undertake any further review. So in our, in our code, it, uh, our code requires the planning board to review what the building inspector has reviewed and basically concur or disagree with, with his determination. Okay, I, I did have one question and I didn't see this anywhere in the material. So I'm assuming it's not an issue. Does this have anything to do with 5G stuff getting, you know, per, is it making that more likely in the future or anything like that? Because I know that that's, that's of a concern to some people. This has nothing to do with that. I don't know whether it does or not. It's their, their they are facility upgrades. Um, but even if it did, then, you know, as long as it meets these, this list of criteria, it would still be considered an eligible facility request. So it's, um, that, that's not one of the criteria that we would be reviewing. Okay, so then I guess I'm okay with, I'm okay with it. Okay, thanks, Jill. Kevin? Yeah, I recall this was, uh, there was a previous application for the same uh, wireless facility on top of Forestal previously, if I'm not mistaken, and it looked a little different. I'm sure it's the same. I don't have, I totally am in agreement with Dave's assessment of this but yeah it makes me think that uh, the technology has changed and that might be a 5g thing 
So this is this is a request to it sounds like um, switch out certain equipment on an existing facility, and again the the, the five G aspect is not something as Jennifer mentioned that's a part of the criteria, mm -hmm. and therefore not um, something we can, though uh, understood that there are concerns around the community about 5G, that's not something we can or should have any input on. Mm -hmm. No, of course. So I, I, I'm, I'm in agreement with uh, Dave's assessment. All right, Len. I'm looking at I'm looking at the site plan, and there's a um, there's an existing equipment existing T-Mobile equipment pad with a number of uh, cabinets on it, and they're adding a looks like they're adding a equipment cabinet and a battery cabinet, but within the footprint of that existing pad, and then there's a number of antennas to be replaced. It seems like many of which are existing. So, you know, proposed T-Mobile antenna to replace existing antenna on existing mount. So that's not changing, but there are a few interstitial um, antenna that are being put in that are not direct replacements. Um, it looks like, you know, maybe one out of three is a new one and there's a new, um, a proposed mast and, and then an existing antenna replacement. So, there are a couple, it looks like there are some new components, but um, the cabinets, et cetera, everything seems to be within the footprint of their existing installation. So I would be, um, I would accept Dave's assessment that this is within the existing footprint and uh, doesn't represent a, a significant expansion. Great, thanks, Len. Um, Randall, what are your thoughts? I accept Dave's assessment of what is, he's been doing this long enough, he knows. Not longer than you, Randall. Come on. Yeah, a little longer than me. <laughs> JC, what are your thoughts? Uh, you gotta, you gotta get a lesson from Joe on Sorry. mute. <laughs> Sorry, I have no reason to, uh, to, 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 to not uh, support uh, Dave's recommendation. But so, uh, could you clarify, Len, what, which site plan were you looking? Because I don't see a link. You gotta, yeah, you've got to go to your email. Um, they sent us a separate package. Oh. It's a nine a nine sheets, okay. and um, the the pad is at ground level, adjacent to the building, and the pad is existing. So they're just adding a new cabinet and a new a new equipment cabinet and a new battery cabinet within the um, within the footprint of the existing pad. And then if I'm if I'm looking at the ele the elevation drawing, the one thing that jumps out at me is that there's a there's two um, there's some changes that are a replacement of existing. So they say proposed T-Mobile antenna to replace existing antenna mounted to existing mast. So that I'm looking at as a replacement in kind, but then there is one proposed T-Mobile antenna mounted on proposed mast. So that's a new new antenna and new mast uh, that's on the roof of the building. Um, and then, you know, looking at, at the, uh, the antenna, you know, again on the on the uh, some of the detail drawings, they're showing replacement of existing equipment, and, and it looks like some some additional equipment being kind of added interstitially. So um, that's you know based on that re quick read of the of the drawings, that's what I'm saying. I I would be it seems appropriate to accept Dave's assessment that what's happening is really within the the footprint of their existing equipment. I see. The, I see the email now. So yeah, I I'm, I'll defer to everyone. So, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take a look at it now. But I I see the email. Thank you. Okay. Well, it sounds it sounds like we're all in concurrence with Dave's uh, assessment. So um, just help me out here, Jennifer. How do we? I mean, we need to formally act on this. But how do we word that? Is it, it is it that we just make a motion to um, express our agreement or? That's with Dave's guess. assessment, you okay. With with Dave's analysis, yeah. Motion to express our um, collective concurrence with Dave Buckley's analysis. How's that? Motion. motion. <laughs> all right. Motion by Len. Second. Second by Jill. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Great. So then we move to our last 
uh, agenda item, and that has to do with um, 248 Tioranda. Uh, the applicant is coming back, if you all remember, this pretty significant um, proposed development on Tioranda, and the applicant will um, clarify for us a little bit more, but has essentially come back to us with some modifications to, and they'll let me know if I got this right, to some of the exterior elements. And I'm, I'm looking to you applicant to um, describe to us very specifically what you're looking to change and why. John, before you get to that, there is another agenda item before the architectural item. How did I miss related that? Related to 248, which is a um, an extension. Okay. Oh, the extension. Oh, extension. Excuse me, I just completely overlooked that. So this is right, and obviously um, necessary. Uh, so you're looking for is it two 90 day extensions, or one? I think they were just looking for one. Okay, sorry, I just I lost the agenda. Um, okay, so we'll we'll address that first. Um, Generally, um, you know, extensions are for good reason. I'm certain and I'm assuming you do have a good reason for an extension. Um, so we're, we're usually generally inclined to grant them. Is there anything you want to add as far as the extension applicant? Yeah, hi, uh, this is Larry Boudreaux with the Shays and Companies. I'm, I'm here with uh, Tim Lynch. Um, and uh, I want to say uh, say hello to everybody. I was last uh, in front of you in April. I hope everybody's doing well. I see you have a new board member, JC, who I know. JC. Hi, hi, Larry. And um, the uh, this condition is um, where to go is uh, part of the general conditions number 12 in the back and I actually missed it. So this would have to be retroactive uh, starting from October 14th. It gives us to January 14th. Um, when I read through the, the code, my, you know, my first thought was get two 90 days extension. So if we don't hit the 14th, we, uh, we won't have to come back, but we're, but we're essentially completed with the, the plat, you know, our, our toughest lift was getting the DOH approval, which they signed off on it and um, stamped the plan on November 13th. Uh, so everything is completed with conditions uh, with the exception of um, editing with, with some, some edits to the easements that Jennifer and I are working through. And uh, we've been going back and forth all all this week. I think we're pretty close, Jennifer. Right? We are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're they're at the finish line. They're, they're right there. They have a couple strides okay, so, left, but the, so, <laughs> they're there. Yeah. So so I think ninety days will will do it. The the idea is um, uh, to get it wrapped up and and um, back to the city next week. So we should we should be all set. The only question I have is on the Greenway Trail. Um, you've mentioned, Jennifer, that we needed to um, get that on, a, on the City Council's board agenda. Would, would that need to be on their agenda and signed off on before the easement is certified as complete? Um, we can talk about that. I'll, I'll have to take a look at the resolution and see how it's drafted. Um, but, but we can talk about that, but that is, that is a step that will need to be taken um, with respect to the easements that you have for this project. I think that's the only one that requires uh, Board of Trustees sign off because it's an easement to the city. So they, the city council has to accept that easement. It's just a form, formality that needs to occur. Yeah, no, under, yeah. understood. I'm just, uh, that may, may push us out, you know, to the end of the year or early next year we'll be cutting the 14th close. Uh, it, it might make sense to get to 90 days. So we don't have to come back. I think we get it, but I just don't want to have to, you know, Russ, you know, rush and come back. You want to? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh. 
result. The board ha has a practice of doing that in the past of granting multiple 90 day extensions. Okay. Yeah, okay. no problem. I, I wasn't so sure. It's up to the board um, how you want to handle it, but um, yeah, I mean, have I, a precedent I, for that. I get it. I personally don't have any issues with it. Two, two 90 day extensions. Um, so I'll, I'll make I'll the make, motion. Randall will make the motion. Motion by Randall. Second. Second, Second by Jill. All in favor? Aye. 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 Right. Okay. Thank so you. now on to the business of your um, modifications. What's going on? That'd be Alex. Oh. Okay. Sorry. Alexander Blakely here, architect for um, the applicant, Barry Kahn, who's also on with us. Larry, you there as well? No. Okay. Um, yes, yes, we're here. Oh, sorry. Okay, so we're here to go over comments uh, that John Clark made um, on our drawings, which we submitted um, on October 12th of this year. Uh, we received comments from him uh, on about October 22nd. There are five of them, and I don't. Can we all see the drawings? I'm not sure how this is working. Or should I share my screen? You, you may want to share your screen. screen. Yeah. So, so as part of our packages, we have your drawings. But if you want to speak to something specific mm -hmm. about what your your modification, these are again, these are you're here asking us to review very specific modifications, right? Okay. So it, it would be helpful if you shared the, your screen and um, in doing so highlighted what it is exactly you're looking to change. Okay, so in case you, I assume that uh, most of you are familiar with the project, but if you're not, uh, this is a mixed use development at Tiaranda Avenue 248. Uh, we have 64 units of uh, residences and uh, approximately 25,000 square feet of commercial area um, in a separate building on the same lot. Uh, parking is also provided. Um, so the comments that we received, and I will share the screen now. Can everybody see the drawings? Yes. Um, I'm just going to jump right into the comments here then. Um, comment number one, put a sheet two seller parking plan, ADA sheet two. It's this one. Um, ADA spaces should be located next to the elevator at shortest accessible route to building entrance elevator. So we've reorganized the parking. And if you see where my cursor is, we've, we've actually done a couple of things on the floor plan, but uh, you can see that the parking spaces for the handicapped accessible spaces are now located directly adjacent to the elevator. So I think it's in uh, a good position now. Should I just go through all the comments and have um, rebuttal afterwards, or does so? So, so forgive me. I, I was of the understanding that there were some architectural elements that you had changed, and and I understand that John has provided comments around some planning, and specifically the one, and I'm sure there are others uh, that you mention here. Um, just yes. procedurally, do I mean these? These, in my view, are um, more administrative. If if I'm not correct, I mean we're not we're not necessarily going to be approving, for example, your relocating parking spaces. If I'm not mistaken, am I right? They yes, would sir. have to. They have changed this, um, and I, the question number one, uh, they've responded to. Uh, and made the changes that I asked for. So uh, I'm not sure we need to really go over these other than to note them that the parking plan is now consistent with the zoning code in terms of 
number of spaces, location of handicap accessibility, and um, there is a provision in the code that you have to be uh, a 10 foot space if it's next to a wall. And so uh, they've uh, changed those to compact spaces which are allowed in the Fishkill Creek district, district to accommodate those. So I'm satisfied with the parking plan um, uh, in this newest iteration. So if that's any help. Um, okay, so I'm just, I don't want to skip anything that's relevant, uh, but then I guess let's look at, there's five comments total here. Uh, comment number two addresses sheets eight through 11. Um, there is a comment in regard to the bulkhead at the top of the commercial building. Uh, John was recommending that I that we rotate it. I can talk about that. Yeah, okay, so so to the, to John's comment, is that something you're willing and able to do? Uh, they have done it. Great. In these latest plans, those were rotated to to be the narrow side towards the view from Tyronda. Great. Okay, so we can move on. I don't. And John, you're you're satisfied. Yes, I. Okay. You know, they did separate the the elevator from the stair bulkhead, but it doesn't. It, it actually breaks it up a little bit. Um, so, you know, I think it, it meets the intent of what the architecture review subcommittee asked for, which was to, to minimize the um, top floor uh, bulkhead features from the view on Tyronda. Okay, great. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking we're gonna get to the fire escape as, as one of these, right? <laughs> so, so keep going, Alexander, what's number three? Sure, uh, number three. Architectural Review Subcommittee recommended that the building or window, window patterns on buildings 200 and 300 be varied to look compatible, not repetitive. The facade think, the, yeah. I was gonna say, I think, I think John, you had pointed out at the time that there was a design standard against having identical facades. And, yeah, and I'm so, just looking for that right now. And I haven't been able to put my, because I reprinted the code after they changed it. And so it's not highlighted on my code. Yeah, so at the, at the time that we, that we looked at the initial building elevations, um, buildings 200 and 300 were identical. And John had pointed out that there was a standard um, with a prohibition on that. So um, that was the, the request to uh, Alexander was to, was to, Revise the design to provide some variation between the two buildings so that they, you know, expected that they would remain compatible. We talked about at the time, I recall, we talked about, you know, beauty and repetition, et cetera. But yeah, but so there was a there was a request to to make some change that that would differentiate the two facades. Yes. So, so I can speak to that. Um, you know, obviously. So I guess we did talk about it. There is an intent here to have a sort of cohesive expression, which I think some members do appreciate. But that said, um, we did go into the elevation and added some elements which introduced some variation on the facade. We've also gone further um, to add some variation to the third floor setback uh, where the, the window patterns are in a diff different rhythm. Um, John did uh, reply, I believe, and say that's to, um, you know, his impression were that the, was that the facade still looked, I don't know if he used the word identical, but, and that was in reference to the previous submission. We've actually changed some of the massing as well of the two buildings, which one could consider technically as one building since they're joined, but I won't get into that. They... If you look where my cursor is right now, you can see that this massing is uh, essentially five bays where this one is four bays. We kind of played around with, with that massing a little bit and the entries to both of the buildings also have a different logic. They kind of look at each other. Uh, you kind of have to look closely to see it, but you know, my argument all along has been that one doesn't see these buildings like like we're all seeing them now on the elevations but 
rather from sort of um, limited uh, or framed views, which one would see from Tiaranda or from the Fishkill Creek. And you're really getting glimpses, angles and perspectives of the building. And from those views, I don't think you're going to have a sense of any kind of overwhelming, um, you know, monotony on the facade or any kind of um, unattractive, let's say, repetition. But, you know, technically speaking, yes, we've, we've introduced some more variation to the facade, but I guess it's um, subject to some opinion as to whether or not it's enough variation. We would argue that it, that it is. I don't know, John, uh, what you thought of the changes. Well, they're, they're subtle. Um, what the code actually says, um, I found it now, in four, I-4A in that section on design standards, it says groups of related buildings shall be designed to present a varied but compatible mix. And so the architecture review subcommittee just suggested that they should not be identical. There should be some variation in the window pattern or the, um, the, the rhythm of the building so that um, they weren't repetitive. Uh, to me, they, you know, I have to look pretty closely to see the difference. There are differences. The zinc panels in the buildings are switched, in the windows are switched. Uh, like uh, Alexander said, the, the bays are not identical, um, but it is subtle and I think, um, it is true that you'll never see them sort of face on side to side the way you see these elevations. Um, so I'm not, you know, I think they probably do certainly uh, are they're very compatible. It's just whether they varied enough for, to meet the, um, the views of the, the uh, architectural review board that constituted as a whole planning board. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> in my view, and based on Alexander's descriptive, um, and what I'm seeing here, I agree with you, John. They are subtle, but they do they do meet the requirements of the um, of the code. And just as a design professional myself, looking at the the you know there's there's a there's a compatibility, there's a consistency, but there is, in my view, I think enough deviation from one another that there is there is no monotony necessarily. Um, so I, I'm personally satisfied with the the moves that the applicant has made relative to some of the differentiation. Anyone else have thoughts? I also appreciate the changes. Uh, you know, I, I think there's something kind of uh, intrinsically um, fun about you know looking at the, the kind of the differences in the bays the 455 versus 464 and the and the windows on the setback story that are they're you know the the way they're clustered is varied on the two buildings but the you know the the buildings are are compatible but there's there's differences that are kind of fun to use out thank you Matt. yeah i agree i mean there's a, there's a somewhat of a, an element of discovery in that um, it's, it's, it's well, well articulated, Len. Uh, I appreciate the overall aesthetic. Um, it's in keeping with the Fishkill Creek development zone of um, sort of recalling the factory buildings of the, of the era. Um, I do have a problem with the balconies, as usual. I, I like that there are balconies. Uh, this kind of balcony has been found to not be used. I think it's a good, a nice gesture to have it there, but it could be a waste because people don't like being stuck out there in the middle of the air. They like prefer balconies that are half in, half out. Otherwise, I think it looks good. All right. Thanks, Joe. One other thing that I would point out, just for clarification, I'm not sure it makes any difference, but um, the stair towers that you see on the lower elevations on your screen have been moved out closer to the edge of the building. 
um, before they were sort of embedded into that top floor. Mm -hmm. so now they've been moved out towards the edge. Uh, they're not fully out towards the edge, but they're, they, they break up that um, terrace that's up on the, the third floor. Um, so, and they create a stronger architectural element than probably they did before um, in the, uh, on the west side. Um, the east side, sorry. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's in my view, the stair tower elements, um, they, they help with the, um, the visual balance. Without that, you know, those sort of vertical slices, they could appear. And I know that's part of the effect is that they, they want to appear sort of low slung and horizontal elements in the landscape. But I, I don't know, personally, I just, I think that the, um, the introduction of these vertical elements is, um, it, it's just, it's grounding. I don't know how better to articulate it. Thanks for pointing that out, John. Anyone else thoughts on this particular item? Okay, so that was number three or number four? It was three. Okay, so what's number four? Uh, build them. Building 100 elevations on sheet 2021 now have a projecting exterior stair structure on the south side that was not shown in the previous renderings. There it is. Okay, so you're all aware of it. Uh, I can explain what's going on there. Let's see. Okay, so as you see on the bottom of the screen, we have this exterior stair that we brought out. Uh, the, the primary reason why we brought that out is because we wanted to free up the floor plate on, um, especially on the upper floors here where we anticipated some um, use of, you know, we don't know exactly who the tenants are gonna be, but we anticipate um, some, some use of of hopefully a more open plan on the third setback floor and on the roof. And this enabled us to avoid having two bulkheads at the, at the top of the roof, which we also thought might perhaps be welcomed by those who had problems with the bulkheads blocking views to, towards the Beacon Mountain. But other than that, we thought they were an interesting feature um, that is perhaps also a little bit industrial in nature. It would obviously, it would be a stair that would only be used um, in the case of an emergency fire because we have the main stair and, and elevators which would principally be used for vertical um, communication. So if, if I have this right, you're, you're pulling a required secondary um, egress stair out of the building where it was it was an internal egress stair yes but now it's a fire stair um i this in my view i your argument that it removes another bulkhead um well, and that's, adds not we, that's not what we did it i'm just i'm just no, saying no, no. You're, you're 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 emphasizing <laughs> what you would consider a positive for this particular move which I, I don't necessarily agree with. Um, you know, it, it adds an element of visual clutter, in my view, and an element that um, doesn't do anything at all to enhance the either the building, the appearance of the building, or you know your your visual experience of the building in its context. It's it's enormous. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm inclined to say you got to find a better way to do this. I had suggested exploring the idea of a fire exterior fire stair, uh, which I can understand. You don't want to put another bulkhead up on top. Um, so you could do an exterior fire stair, but doing it parallel to the building rather than perpendicular to the building, maybe on the, on the east side of the building rather than on the south side where it's more visible from Tyronda. Um, okay, well, I mean, you know, I, I wasn't aware 
honestly that there was any concern with it at all. So this is the first time I'm really hearing it. Um, so. Um, well, I was in my letter on, on in October um, that the exterior could be placed parallel to the south side of the building was a suggestion uh, or parallel to the east side of the building. But, um, you know, there was concerns about views from Tyronda and, and the area where this is, is sort of where the intersection, where the entrance drive comes down into this area. And so it seems to me this new element may block or obstruct some of the view as you come into your entrance drive of the mountains. So I'm not sure that it, it adds any. I appreciate the industrial quality and I think an exterior stair has that quality and, and could be a useful. I'm just, is there a better way of hugging it and not making it such a appendage on the building? Yeah, there's a, there's a significant exterior stair structure on the Creek Drive uh, project that's being constructed on the, you know, also on the Fishco Creek, but that stair is, is um, right up against the side of the building so that it doesn't, it doesn't project um, separate from the, from the rest of the structure. Okay, so what I'm hearing is, is, is that um, it's not necessarily the fact that it is an exterior stair, it's just that it's projecting a little bit too far out for, um, for some people. Uh, that's what I would say is it, I like the stair. I, I like what you're trying to do there. And I think that it, it creates an interesting visual element. And I, like I also like that it creates a place that could potentially be used as an outdoor space for people, um, you know, taking coffee break or want to get some exercise going up or down um, and get a nice view. Uh, I think it could be pulled in a little bit. Yeah, it I, sort of is sort of creates also a nice um, sculptural element, kind of like our own uh, Hudson Yards vessel for a beacon. I agree. I kind of, I actually do like it, but I hear um, John's grievance with it. Um, Look, I, I, I'm somewhat of a purist, only in so far as that you know, exterior fire escapes are, you know, they exist because you know, somewhere along the line, we realized as we were building and, you know, people were having issues and dying uh, in buildings that weren't adequately egressed that, you know, they, they had to be added on or glommed on. Right. So it, it's just, maybe it's a perception thing. I think so. And I that think a metal that. exterior fire escape is just that it's um, it's an afterthought. Right. And, I, but it's obviously one for, you know, safety. We're building a modern new building here. Um, I, and so look, it, it certainly doesn't rise to the level of the vessel, although I think the vessel is awful. It looks like a big, you know, copper pine cone. Um, but that's just my opinion. Um, I, this it certainly isn't, you know, a sculptural element. I mean, and again, you know, it's a, it's a fire escape. It is what it is. And I, I agree, you know, people tend to use in, you know, New York City fire escapes to, you know, have their little barbecues and stuff, but you're, you're obstructing an egress when you're doing that. So that's not even recommended. It's just, you know, maybe I'm coming at this from too much of a, you know, sort of a code wonk. Um, but I, I just see it as one of these things that you're building a modern new building and, um, you know, a fire, a fire uh, egress element should in a new modern building be just that and it should be in a, you know one that's to the interior and look i can understand your need for more floor area I, um, I appreciate the comments john but i mean i could show you a lot of modern buildings you know uh, celebrated buildings that have exterior stairs on the outside so i, I don't yeah, look, I, I, I can, I can, I can cite a few too, um, but what, yeah. that's not to say that I think I think it's great. <laughs> can I, know, it's, again, it's just a matter yeah. of opinion. But so, well, but that's why again, I, that's why I think this is interesting in that, it, as opposed to to making it parallel to the south side to the south end of the building, that by extending it, it yeah. it you know it makes it a different experience visually and you know, usage wise. And I don't think people would be doing barbecues because this is not a, a residential building. So I, I don't think that that's really going to be a problem. And I don't like the vessel either, but what I was bringing that up in is, is an appreciation for this as a, as a more sculptural 
treatment of a utilitarian experience. Can I, Kevin, just, Kevin's got something. I just, I just have a, a, a practical question. Ed, can you confirm that you checked the commercial code that this is compliant? Because I know that there are, uh, and I just haven't done, I've only worked in New York City uh, and uh, I haven't done much work up here. So this is the New York State code. It seems as if ICE and other things may, um, uh, the code would discourage this. Hey, John, that John being Clark. said, that being said, I, I like it. I think that's, this is my kind of, this is the sort of thing that I've worked with. This is your jam, work. Kevin? <laughs> this is my jam. I like the uh, post-industrial. I, I love the buildings that were there before. There were all sorts of metal um, attachments to those existing brick buildings that added character and uh, things. I, I don't think it needs to be quite this much. And, and, and I don't think that it necessarily needs to be artistically done to, uh, or, you know, anything but a functional, um, uh, 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 um, a, a, a functional, um, a functional stair that's built out of metal also has, you know, it's one of the things that gives character to urban environments where they've been added. The reason why they were added in the city was because no one put secondary means of egress in existing loft buildings in the city. And so it were residential buildings. And so they had to be added. It's just, uh, as a uh, secondary benefit that people could have barbecues on them or whatever else they use. Um, but I would, because there, there's also exterior stairs on, um, I, I would hope that everybody's reviewed that, but it just, it's not something that I've seen in ordinary course of events and in, in already new, ordinary new construction. So, right. That's why I'm saying, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure we went through this on, on um, I can't remember the street, the number off the top of my head, but Creek Drive yep. and that, and that's a concern about, um, snow and ice accumulation was addressed by the fact that everything was open work metal structure so that there was no way for it to accumulate. Um, yeah, look, I think at the end of the day, um, I'm not sure what other members um, have to say about it, but um, you know, I think just visually, if, if it needs to be an exterior um, egress stair, uh, visually, it, it just, and it, maybe it's just the angle I'm looking at it as, and, and it, you know, it's blocking the view of a very nice tree there. Obviously, that's just a rendered tree, but my point is, is that it, 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 it just, it, it's leaning toward what I would consider visual clutter. Um, and, and, and again, this isn't a replica of the old industrial buildings. And I, I wouldn't even read it as a nod to, you know, the good old days of old industrial buildings because it's a modern looking building with industrial materials, brick and metal. Um, but everybody knows it's a brand new building. Um, so if it needs to be an exterior fire escape, I personally would uh, try to do what I could do to just minimize its visual impact and its ability to, as John Clark mentioned, uh, potentially get in the way of some, um, you know, some views down toward the creek. That's all. So how do we, how, how do we, without, uh, is there a way that we can revise this, tuck it in a little bit? Maybe that would please you, John. Well, John had mentioned, and I'm, I'm not going to design it for you. Um, I don't get paid nearly enough in this role. <laughs> but uh, that th there may be an opportunity to just rotate it 90 degrees and have it um, somewhat more um, hug the building. Is that something that's that you could do? I, I think so. There's um, some equipment there that uh, I think was part of the reason why we pulled it out a little bit further, but also we kind of liked it. Um, stressed yeah, out. Mike my concern is that then it would it would look just like a regular old fire escape yeah i think really um you know we did wind up liking it and i i, I understand some people have negative associations with certain architectural expression for whatever reason and um the question is um yeah. look i'm just one board is it the um is it the pump so. station that's um that was kind of driving the, the the distance that it projects out from the building or 
I'm just I'm looking at the the plan views, just trying to get a sense of what equipment you were. And yeah, there's a pump know. station there, and yeah, that was one of my other questions: is that will that block access to the pump station? I thought it was put there deliberately at the end of that driveway so that you could back up a truck and deal with that uh, if you had maintenance issues or whatever. Um, but I asked for a, a detail showing the site plan around that pump station if you're going to keep it this way um, so that you, we could understand whether there's any conflicts uh, between the, um, the placement yeah. of this. I mean, it just so I, me you could step it down around the corner of that back corner of the building or something where you could still have an exterior fire stairs. It wouldn't get in the way of the pump station and it would break it up so you would still have a industrial metal fire escape but you wouldn't have a protrusion that that you know we're going to catch flack about from publics who want to see the mountains from the intersection of um the entrance road and whatever that other road that goes uh, west hmm. yeah um, I guess, is, so uh, this is larry at uh, chase and alex one thing too that we got to keep in mind on this is the uh, easement area, right? The parking easement that goes back to Sisters. There's a line that's, I believe, it's not too far south of the pump station, and we're not going to be allowed to get in that. So I'll, I'll work with you on that. How should we leave off on on this particular item? Well, look, I mean, you, you've, you've heard from, I'm, again, I'm just one board member, and, 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 and I'll, I'll only add that you, you've done a, a very good job. I think the, the design is, is very, very nice. It's beautiful. Um, of these very um, simple but elegant forms of the buildings. And this one, <laughs> this one element just kind of <laughs> slapped on there is, is just not, it just doesn't sit right with me, but I'm just one board member. Uh, if you need it, and I know I'm hearing that there is some sense that this as a sculptural element or something that you know exemplifies, you know, pure form of stair and metal, you know, materials. That, that's all fine. Um, so, if 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 the majority of the other board members think this is okay, then you can all tell me to shush. If I could just uh, add two points, um, John. Because uh, this is the first time I'm seeing the, the plans. I know it's a, a long project, but I do agree with the idea that perhaps rotating it, but maybe not, uh, but keeping it separate from the building a little will keep that sculptural element. But, you know, I can imagine being out there on a cold day and windy here in Beacon, it's quite windy. And I, I don't know that I want to uh, be out there when it's windy. And it just seems like perhaps it'll be a, li a little less, less uh, exposed to the elements if it's closer to the building. Well, and again, if you're using this, you're you're basically running to save your life. True. So it really um, doesn't matter whether it's windy or cold. <laughs> you're happy you're still alive. Right. No, no not necessarily, though. I mean, somebody might use it. To yeah, that's that's true. That, communicating that, stairs, yes. Right, that, I mean, that went to Jill's point, right, that, that someone might choose to take the stairs and maybe they enjoy getting a view of the creek from that structure. Yeah, and if they don't have vertigo. Building. Oh, come on. It's a, I was painting a, on a 32 foot ladder last year. Yeah, that's weekend. you. Isn't it? <laughs> Some people are really scared of heights. Look, I, look, I don't, I don't, it just, the, all this is just, you know, just, you know, talk, but it, it, it's, a, you need a stair. You've proposed a, you know, this particular configuration. Um, I'm, again, I'm just one board member. I'm not saying, you know, hell no. I'm just, I'm just observing that. It just it does it doesn't do it doesn't in my view, as I said these these very pure elegant forms. Uh, it 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 looks like a an add on. It kind of looks like a mistake. But if that's how you want to present your your project, and the other board members think this is okay, then then we'll move on. Uh, my question was. Um if there was a desire, you know, to retain the structure and the, and in an effort to sort of um, respond to some of the, the observations or critique, there was a choice to either rotate it or to pull it back a little bit tighter to the building such that, that, 
that kind of the is it possible to 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 uh, reduce the length of it so that the bays with the cross pieces aren't completely um you know you i'm just wondering if it's if it's you know I, if there's I a thought there, on that i think there is um I think there is some latitude that we could, you know, pull it in, rotate it. Do I think our uh, approach has been from the start that we were presenting something which was, you know, not a hundred percent, but partially the concept of the stair, which um, might need a little work. Uh, it was never completely clear to me that that we had to have a hundred percent finalized design for uh, for review or approval although at, at this point it seems like we almost do so that stair i think uh we could play with if the concept of having it there is okay with the board i don't know if there's some way we can say like we did with the bulkhead that we would make an effort perhaps to mitigate the, the length of it because um or or whether it can be approved and uh we Um, I think Larry's point uh, that there's an easement on that property to the, to the south is relevant here because I just pulled out the plans and it looks to me like that easement is only a few feet from that driveway and pump station. So it may be that you can't do it with, within the context of your prior easement agreement with the neighbors. Well, let's say those are, you know, that, that kind of argument is, is is obviously uh, relevant, practically speaking, but I mean, if we could concentrate on whether or not it's acceptable to have it conceptually, I think it would be helpful. Design-wise, I, I have made my views clear. I think it's a positive thing. I think it could be pulled in a little closer to the building um, to about, Almost the width of one of, of, of that bay with the X. Right, the um, cross pieces. I think Jill and I are on the same page as keep it. Yeah. What would the option of keeping it um, parallel to the long axis of the building as it's shown, but reducing the length of it? I think there's a couple of things that we could do with it and also, um, you know, address issues uh, with with access um, so that so that we can make it better. I, I think there's ways that we can make it better both visually and practically. Alex, yeah. can you put it can you put it on the east side of the pump station? Yes, uh, that just crossed my mind as well. So and there. and that easement, you know, runs um, just off the utility lines there. But I don't see your stair tower going out there. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll work with you on it. <clears throat> Is this? Yeah, yeah. It's... Can I can I ask the applicant, are they, um, how do they respond to Kevin Burns' concern about compliance? Has that been resolved as far as you're concerned? Compliance with having an exterior stair. We did research it. We are uh, with the the state code, and it is is completely acceptable to have an exterior stair. Um, yeah. In New York City, uh, it used to be that you had to have a covering over the stair, but I think they have since allowed you to use other mechanisms such as heat tracing to keep snow off of it. Yeah, oil. look. At the end of the day, we're not the arbiters of code, and uh, right, whether you're in compliance, uh, Dave Buckley is. Um, so yeah. that's not something we should spend time. You, you just you have to be in compliance. That's all, and that's that's yeah. your that's your responsibility. Um, so, good question. Out of concern for safety, but not something we need to spend time on. Just for information. Or just for my curiosity, not 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 as part of our. Yep. Um, so what do we do to wind this up, John? Uh, let's. So I'm. Can, I'm, can I make one, a one quick statement, and then I'll be sure. done. Sure. Okay. That as a design, uh, uh, that there are two things. Uh, one point is that this applicant is shown that he is a conscientious uh, design professional, and he takes it very seriously. And that um, so far, I wouldn't micromanage um, at, at this point. It, uh, 
uh, allowing some uh, uh, design freedom, right, or even encouraging it would probably be uh, responsible. Um, and the second point is, if I was to micromanage the design or give advice, um, I would either make that uh, element uh, more um, more distinctive as a feature item. Uh, so make it uh, not uh, either uh, uh, have it go out of the, the, the roof line in some way or in some way make it uh, more distinctive and as a separate element uh, or make it less distinctive and make it more in. So uh, right now it's, it's in this in-between stage and I think that might be a, a direction that you take the design. But other than that, I, I think that um, uh, I don't want to micromanage this sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So, what what are y'all proposing that we propose that we approve or <laughs> share our agreement that the, obviously an exterior stair and one that is generally in the configuration that is represented here, but with some modifications to take into account some of the concerns um, would be acceptable. Yes. Does that give you enough of enough guidance, applicant Alexander? Uh, yeah, certainly. Uh, I guess ultimately we would like to walk away with this um, with an approval for our, our client, so we can move forward. And uh, but I don't know how to, you know, put some sort of uh, footnote on that so that we will address that. Certainly, I'm not going to. Yeah, and so again, I'm, I don't think Jennifer's still with us, is she? And so my question would have been, and maybe John, you can help here. Um, I'm here. Oh, you are. Oh, yeah, you I'm are. Here. So yeah. do we, we have to we have to basically act on thing in the background. Each of these, am I correct? Act on each of these in terms of what, what do you mean by each of these? You have the architectural review in front of you. Right on the approval. It's for the these approval of the architectural yeah right your these your, modifications your arb approval right so right. if you remember during the site plan stage you you did not issue architectural approval during the site plan stage you reserved that decision um and require the applicant to come back to you with the architectural drawings and renderings to review uh which the applicant is in the process of right here yep so yeah, so I just wanted to get clear our, our procedure. So, 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 and that's why, I, and I asked because I wanted to make sure that what we just noted relative to this particular element, the stair and our um, direction to the applicant on it um, is something we can incorporate into that approval. So if your direction is clear and able to be um, effectuated in a way that doesn't require you to review it again um, at, at your next meeting, I, you know, I think you can issue architectural approval with conditions that you know, the applicant has to do X, Y, or Z with respect to the stairs. If it's yeah. something that you feel you need to take a look at once the modification is made, then it, it should be adjourned to your next meeting. Yeah, that's that's what I'm trying to avoid because I because I want I want the applicant to be able to move on. I want and I'm 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 confident that the applicant is you know taking what we've all had to say in, and will with the the, the direction and the and the observations that we've made um, make adjustments that will end up being acceptable without us having to you know review it again in great detail. Um, so what I'm what I'm getting at is how do we word that so that it's it's a, you know it's an acceptable and um you know usable approval for this yeah, particular. So I think element. you just need to be as clear as you can about exactly what modifications need to be made, um, and you can even you you can even throw in there you know just as a a, a backstop so to speak um, you know subject to um, you know, review and satisfaction of, of John Clark. 
so that there is someone. <laughs> so, so that's ultimately what I was. I won't agree with that one. That's ultimately what I was getting at. Um, so, now, so I'm, the, I'm, I'm suggesting. I will suggest, and you can take it for what you want, that they should come back because I think of this as being a pretty um, prominent feature near the entrance to this site, and. Um, the applicant has shown really good architectural sense, but he's also shown that he does things, um, makes big changes from the last time we saw it. So I'm not comfortable myself signing off on something vague. It seems to me we should sign off on what is shown to us. Uh, that's my suggestion. Well, we also haven't discussed the fifth point that John- no, I know. Square footage issue, right? right? So yeah. that, that, that could take some time too. Um, yeah. No, I, I think, um, Barry, you're on. Yes, hi. I think, I think that, you know, maybe you should say something because I mean, if we have to go to another review, maybe it's not the end of the world because this isn't gonna affect the rest of our planning. I don't know, but that's it's there, you know, we can yeah. still, we can still move forward with, with what we have to do. That's yeah, there. I mean, it, it shouldn't. I mean, again, I think we're all in agreement that an exterior stair is okay. And that what we're, what we're talking about are minor adjustments. And right. I, I personally agree with John. I was trying to sort of, you know, thread know. this, thread this so you didn't necessarily have to come back because I do trust you guys. But I, I, I tend to agree. I would I would like to, and, and we've, we've put this onus on, other applicants and we've had issues in the past of applicants promising things and no, I, i'm just saying I, I don't have i don't see a problem from our side doing that i mean something more structural structural like if you were to say um, you know you didn't like the massing here or there that would hold us up from the process but yeah that stair is not going to hold us up so i think coming okay back. so that so that will save me what i was getting to these machinations of how to you know word a, an approval with conditions because I think if you are willing to come back that we would we would you know be confident that you've taken away what we've got to say and that you'll come back with something that's um approvable right. so I, then I, so then we can move on to point number five but yes Barry can I say something one uh, point it's a condition of uh, finishing up these approvals why can't we just do this as coming back and the same way it's getting approved now, this particular stairs has to be approved. And we have no problem to... Yeah, yeah, I think that's what we're back. suggesting. So yeah, we're glad you agree. Okay, because, all right. No this, problem. Because of a bad season, we, we're, we were just really pushing this and uh, we might miss, uh, you know, the winter before we can come in to start doing this project. We really want to get started. Um, and I believe that we're there. And um, so... You know the approval would be uh, appreciated, and this way we can move on. And we have a, one issue to deal with, and uh, we've got to deal with it. And I'm sure Alex will come up, like he's always fabulous, that he comes up with a solution uh, that uh, makes everybody happy. Yeah. Okay. So you, we're you're, we're in agreement. You'll you'll mm -hmm. you're okay coming back next month with the, with this. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And that'll give time to prepare a resolution that's well thought out, rather than trying to adopt something tonight on the fly. Yeah, I agree. So that's helpful because uh, that's what I was. That's what I was leading up to, and I was, you know, trying to figure out how to do that. And I'm glad we don't have to. Um, so then, just, item I'm, number five. Just, I'm sorry. One thing to clarify: what I mean by a resolution to um, this is going to wait a month for the resolution, uh, which means that this puts us into January. For uh, Larry, are you still with us or no? Is Larry from Chasen still with us? No, Larry has left. Well, Larry's left though. Okay. okay. All right, so uh, all right, so let's move on then to the number five. Uh, building 100 now shows a full lower floor with large windows on the east and north elevations rather than the previous stone foundation wall. This could potentially add up to 10,000 gross square feet of commercial space, uh, thereby substantially increasing the parking requirements. The applicant has stated that this basement level will contain accessory uses to the commercial space above and should not be included in the total floor areas defined in section 223-63. Um, I'm 
not sure. You know, we looked into the um, the ordinance here, the beacon um, and ordinance, and, and and it does say that we're allowed to have accessory space, which we plan on using for either storage or fitness for um, for the commercial space above. And I'm uh, Andrew. Not This would most probably become the amenities for the residential building, but not for outsiders. So it's not going to really incur any extra or generate any extra parking requirement in that sense. So, so let me get this straight. You're saying that this is going to be the gym and accessory community type space for the residential properties. Um, as well as the commercial. And the commercial. Okay, so there's uh, that. That wasn't clear. You, know, you said it was going to be accessory uses, but you didn't define what those uses were. Um, I did talk to Dave and uh, about this, and he looked at the definitions and agreed that if it is going to be accessory uses to the primary uses, um, it can. It's all right. Um, it doesn't affect the parking count, thereby. So um, it just seems like a very big space for storage, which is what I originally assumed what you were talking about. Now, the, the reason that that's there is because of the slope and the foundation has to be there no matter what. So we figured might as well put in some windows to the creek side and use that as a gym and use that as whatever we can uh, put in. You know, it's almost like as we have free space for the, all the tenants that live over there to enjoy it. Which uh, by the by doing the parking underneath the uh, the residential buildings, we took away the space to do amenities, and that's why that works out to be over here uh, as amenity space. And the uh, commercial will should be able to use a gym if it's office space just as much as the residential. That's our thought. Yeah, I I, I my feeling based on what I know, I haven't run across this in the past to be able to give you a definitive answer. But from what I talked to Dave about, um, he seemed to agree that the, the definitions do allow an accessory uses and amenity spaces um, to not count towards the parking count. Um, so my first uh, impression is yes, you could do that. I just thought it was a lot of room for boxes if that's what you were talking about storage. Well, I didn't realize you were talking about gym and fitness and conference room and you know things like that. But it can't be considered, you know, part of the office space itself, the office use. It would add more employees. That's, I think, uh, what triggers the parking. Understood. So ultimately, what you're saying, John, is that the assessment is that we're in compliance. Uh, I, I'm, I think I want to double check with Dave on it to make sure, because he was still thinking it as being storage rather than gym or community rooms or that sort of thing. So he may have some limitations that he would put on it. But generally speaking, I think that makes me more comfortable. Because I was worried that it might, you might get approvals and then come back in six months and say, well, we got a tenant who wants an extra 10,000 square feet or 5,000 square feet mm -hmm. of office space. And then we, you know, build out the, have to build out the parking to match, match it and we end up taking away the green space in the center. Yeah. Okay, so the intent is not to use that as additional office space. This is just supportive amenity space for. Yeah. So I guess we could put a note in there. Um, yeah, that would have to be noted on the plan and a, and a condition of approval that this is not going to be used for office or you know residential or other uses that would trigger up additional parking requirement. That's okay. Okay. So next steps. Um, I think so. So you're you you guys are are good to come back next month, right? Is that what we were saying? I don't understand. I mean, I don't, I'm not as familiar with the whole approval process as, as Larry is. Um, my our only my only concern is um, what are we um, very 
are we able to move forward or do we have to respond to this before we put a shovel in the earth? Um, I'm not as familiar as well. Um, that's what I'm trying to avoid. I'm trying to clarify to make sure that I uh, can assure that the board will be, um, from what I heard from all the comments about the stair, uh, and I agree with some of the comments, um, nothing against Alex, you know, um, I like your stuff and I don't know, we don't always agree. Um, and actually it costs a lot of money to do that big uh, thing. So uh, yeah, I agree to cut it down a little bit, but we'll make sure that the board is, um, happy with the, the design and, yeah. uh, we tried doing that before. So, so you know, we'd like to get an approval and come back. And we have done that by, by the previous project, we'll come, come back with colors and for an approval. So then, so I'm, I'm just curious, would, would this, would, would, is this stair holding up the entire, the, the, the uh, applicant's entire ability to, as he says, put a shovel in the ground? As far as I understand, and Jennifer can clarify, there's a condition before of uh, signing the- uh, uh, The final, yeah, yep. As the review board. So I believe that this is a minor condition that uh, can be addressed uh, to coming back at a later date. Um, it could be a condition for CFO um, or for even a building permit. So Jennifer, are you, if you're still there, can, can, we, can we condition an approval? And of course we've got you know, approval on the majority of the other elements. This, uh, condition this approval on the applicant coming back only to review um, adjustments to the stair. So the, the planning board resolution um, that was approved earlier this year includes as a condition that needs to be fulfilled before, before okay. John signed the, the site plan is that the applicant shall return to the planning board to complete architectural review of the project and obtain approval thereof. So architecture, I mean, if the stair, if the stairway is included in architectural review, I would think that that needs to be, that's part of what needs to be approved before, um, you know, before you sign the site plan based on your prior resolution. But the, um, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to think on the fly here of, of, of a way around that, but I, I, I you know, I, I think that the board needs to approve the stair before the site plan can be signed based on your, your prior resolution. Yeah. <clears throat> so <laughs> unfortunately, all indications are, are pointing to, um, and you know, I've got to weigh the advice of our um, professional consultants. Um, the, I, mean, I, just, uh, I wonder, is there work, um, Mr. Cohen, is there work that you would have been able to do at the site between today and and January 12. Yes. Um, as far as important. site work, I mean, I, I don't know as you know with, with Dave Buckley, the you know the, the building inspector, um, as far as the administrative process goes. I mean, I know there are things that that need to be fulfilled before you can get a building permit. Um, you know, between there's separate conditions before a building permit, but I don't know if there was some sort of site work permit that that Dave Buckley was was considering issuing um, to allow certain work at the site prior to the issuance of a building permit. Yes, and I spoke to Dave Buckley, and he agreed with me that uh, we don't need a building permit to start up the site, and which is very important because of uh, the law of the bad seasons uh, mm -hmm. that we cannot disturb any of the trees after a certain date. I'm not sure. I think it's March. March uh, yeah. And that's that's a huge factor in this. Uh, and this yeah. can, this can uh, make a difference of a full year of touching this job. So what, I, what I'm hearing is that there are certain things you can do and would do, would be able to do between now and, um, you know, conditions that would preclude you from doing any site work that you can, that you you can do without a billing permit and you wouldn't necessarily for that reason need this approval um, to do. Am I, I hearing I, that correctly? I don't know if I don't need a, uh, to start up the site. Um, if I don't need the approval of the, of the, of the site plan, 
um, the site plan approval would have to be signed before I guess start. And I'm not sure I can clarify that with Dave tomorrow. Um, but so that's what my understanding was for a building permit. That's a different that we need the, you know, the full drawings, but that's that we have time that I wouldn't argue about that fact because, uh, you know, that's another month. It's not the end of the world. This with snow coming and with different things, it's uh, it's pretty much uh, almost a game changer uh, of this project. I mean, John, I'm just thinking out loud. I mean, one thing you could do um, tonight is, is you, you know, you could make a motion um, to say that, you know, that the planning board with respect to the, what is it, condition six, B6 of, of your prior resolution, which is the condition that says the applicant has to come back for architectural review before you sign the site plan. You can say that, um, that the planning board has no objection to the applicant um, proceeding with, with tree clearing. Um, and, and I don't know if you should say, and, and other site work, because I don't know what, what other site work would be involved, but with, with you know, any tree clearing that would need to, to occur prior to your, your January meeting. That way the applicant, it's clear to Dave and you have it in writing, Dave will have it in writing that the planning board is okay with the applicant moving forward with that tree removal work. Yep. In advance of you that. giving the final approval. You, you okay with that, Barry? I'm, I'm fine with that, yes. Okay, all right. So, so then that's what we'll do. I think that gives you the ability to do the work that you can do starting the minute you leave this call um between now and january's meeting um and it seems to me that practically speaking the sum total of that would be you know to start tree clearing is that is that pretty much what you had planned yes that's that's the major uh, thing that uh we you know in all in in all fairness uh this was supposed to occur a year ago um or maybe two years ago but uh you know this is covert and everything has got pushed and pushed and yeah. pushed and if we don't accomplish this, uh, then uh, it's going to hold up another year. Yeah, no, understood, yeah. understood. And I, I can understand too the the, the big concern around the bat yeah. season no, and I making sure that make you've done that clearing, you know, outside of that. Yeah. And so, I, second of all, I just wanted to make sure. Okay, the stairs, I, because I have the, all the confidence in the world and Alex. We're doing yeah. a lot of projects together. Um, we have another big project in Beacon coming up, so uh, which you're going to see Alex a lot. And um, so uh, we're not running away. I wouldn't be surprised if you don't see the stair at all next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, do what you got to do. But uh, yeah. right. um, I, so, I, so I think then, Jennifer, I think that's a that's a very good um, way to um, thread this needle. Um, so then, the approval tonight would be with the. Um, the oh, I'm just thinking through how to word this. And you did it very well, Jennifer. But with the um, d message to Dave that the planning board is um, actually, it's it wouldn't be an approval. It would be that we are um, with his review. We're um, understanding and um, okay with the applicant um, proceeding with tree clearing between now and January. Um, and that uh, with the understanding the applicant is uh, going to come back to us um, next month, um, basically to review any revisions to the stair. Is that right? Yeah. So so then is it, is it just a matter of this being formalized in a communication to Dave? Yeah, so Etha, we'll, we'll take it down in the minutes and then the, the minutes will be the formal you know, recording. Okay of that motion. Okay, so then Etha, if you're not asleep at the moment, <laughs> is that is that something you've got recorded well enough that? Yes, I feel I have it. We're confident we have it yep. properly in the record. Yes, okay. Somebody just needs to make the motion in the second. So. Are you doing it in a motion form or no, Jen? Yeah. So is it, and then the, um, the action is to um, approve communication of us to Dave, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll accept a motion to do so. Motion. Motion. <laughs> okay, we got a motion by Len and a second motion by Joe. 
Okay. Be the second. Be, Joe will be the second. So yeah. then all you know, in favor. Uh, I, yeah. I, I was just going to say it's an e motion since we're all um, digital. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Joe made a funny in the middle of an action. <laughs> we have to all we have to all indicate our agreement. Aye. 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 Okay. Um, okay. So guys, thank you so much for your patience. And I'll I'll just note and acknowledge again that you, you all have been extremely cooperative, extremely patient. You've presented to us over the course of a number of years. And you guys aren't the first to come and present to us this site. So this has been in our sites for 10 years. But um, what I would consider an extremely attractive and positive development. So thank you. And thank you for your patience. Yeah, Agreed. Yeah. Agreed there. Excited to move forward. Thanks. Thank yep. you. Great. Good night. Good night. Have a happy holidays. You too. You too. Good night. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, um, so Jill, go for it. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Goodbye. Take Who care, did everybody. Second? Who did this? Uh, uh, John Gunn did. John Gunn? Yeah. I did. Yep. Take All care, right, everybody. Great. Stay well. Talk to right. you soon. You too. Okay, happy holidays. Great holidays. We'll yeah, talk, to you. You too. holidays. talk to you in January. Happy cool. holidays. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you.